this meeting is being recorded. Okay, I'm gonna make sure she knows she's being recorded. She's, we've already exchanged emails, so I know she, she's been told. Okay, now that we're recording. So, this psychic reached out to me via Center for Inquiry, sent an email to me, which was accidentally sent to the CFI investigation group first, think, and they responded to her thinking that she was trying to take the paranormal challenge. When we got it all figured out, she was actually writing to me, and she reached out to me with this email. Um, Greetings, Susan. A friend of mine shared one of your articles with me. I'm looking at the email because I have a second screen over here. I am wondering, are you fully convinced that there are no true psychics? Or would you like to talk to and have a free reading with a true and genuine psychic? I'm also a skeptic, perhaps one of the very few psychic skeptics in the world. I look forward to hearing from you. And that was her email to me. And I immediately sent, said, sure, as long as I can record it, let's do it over Zoom so that people can, can, um, can watch and judge for themselves. Um, I did say that, um, you know, if you're going to do a reading for me, and let's say it's 100% accurate, and I just repress the, the reading so that then it's not really fair to her because I'm just hiding it, and then I'd look like one of these bad people who, who pretend, you know, who's going to cover up the evidence. So I said, let's do it live so that anybody who's watching it will, will know as soon as I do, and that, you know, I'm talking to a genuine psychic. But she said that she wasn't comfortable with, with um, she was comfortable with recording. Well, here's what she says. It is clear you have an intense drive to prove your thoughts. However, I am not motivated by money or fame and definitely not interested in a debut. Uh, this is a genuine offer to allow you to have an experience with a true psychic. You may certainly record the session. As you already know, I do not have a Facebook account. I am not into technology and have very little knowledge of it. I come from a time when people actually communicated directly and respectful to each other. In addition, I do not know what a Zoom link is. This reading is for you. It will be by phone. And if you are pure in your desire to have a real reading, I'm offering that there is no way to attempt to prove anything to anyone. I believe your pursuit is noble as there are many who take advantage of others. However, there, there includes the possibility there are people who are genuine and have a strong desire to help others. I have such a desire. Additionally, I will not be subject to de degradation and sarcasm as I come to you with respect and encouragement. I hope you are of the same caliber of person to show the same. So that was my exchange with her. We went back and forth and picked today at this time. She has, she's in Oregon. She has a couple children and her husband had to be around to watch the kids while this is happening. And um, she did suggest one more thing. Uh, okay, she did say in the gesture of expressing the possibility there are legitimate people like myself, I'd like to offer a second reading to you to give to someone else in the, I offered this because I imagine there is quite a bit of information about you in the world, and I would like to erase doubt or anticipation of a controlled or contrived reading. I do ask there is honesty, meaning no fake names. I read energy, giving false information, not only is deceitful, but also does not allow you to be open. So I guess that's, she's saying, you know, that what I did with the, the fake Facebook pages with Thomas John, um, that that was deceitful because I was deceitful by putting fake Facebook pages in a fake name when I attended the, the Thomas John reading. Uh, then therefore, that meant that he was going to give me a bad reading which I'm not really sure I understand because the reading he gave me was directly from the Facebook pages that I had no access to and Mark Edward had no access to. So the deceit, uh, I feel, is on the, the Thomas John and not on my end. But whatever, that's what this, this psychic who's going to be um, reading me today has, has, thinks. And her, I'm calling her Ray because her real name is so unusual that it would definitely give away who she is. It is not anybody you know. Just be clear about that too. It's not Teresa Caputo or anybody like that. This is some, somebody has a website and this is the first I've ever heard of her. Um, she said about my friend that she wants to give the reading to, she only needs to know their first name and that they're on the phone. If they're open, their energy will do the rest. With most readings, personal information does come up. Be prepared for that. Remind me, I've got to say something about that too, that I'm okay with any personal information. Oh shoot. Uh, 
Okay, I'm making myself a note uh, because I want her to make sure she knows that she's she can say whatever she wants. I don't care. I do not ask for anything in return and I'm not looking for notoriety. I like my quiet, simple life, which is why I'm not giving her publicity as her name. This will be reading over the phone. So I'm going to put my phone on speaker and then hopefully, you guys are going to be really quiet over here. So <laughs> hopefully we'll be able to hear her okay. Um, and I, um, I have a few questions. Oh, so the in, independent, um, CFI IG responded to her thinking that they had somebody who was willing to take the their quarter million dollar paranormal challenge and Jim Underdown who's the director there um, was trying to trying to talk to her about oh so you're going to take our challenge and blah 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 and Ray responded saying no I'm reaching out to Susan and so there was miscommunication there and she said that and I'm paraphrasing this, I don't have the email pulled up in front of me, but what she was trying to say is that she feels that the work that I'm doing, I guess, is good work, I guess, to expose people who are fraudulent. And I'll see if I can get that more clear in a minute. And that possibly the problem is, is I've never had a real genuine reading from a real psychic. So therefore, I can't compare a real psychic to a fraudulent psychic. I know, you know, I know what you're thinking and I'm not psychic, but what she's saying is that she's a real deal and that I should have something to compare with. And Jim Underdown responded with a, a, oh, she gave the analogy of, you know, when you go to a mechanic or I guess a doctor, you, you need to be able to know a good doctor from a bad doctor or a bad mechanic from a good mechanic you know you have to have experienced uh, 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 the good and the bad so that you can differentiate between the two and his response is really good he says well <laughs> your analogy doesn't hold up because you know we have we know doctors and medicine work i mean we know we know mechanics can fix cars um you know those are those are real things but we don't have any proof of a real psychic so how can we you know how can we know a good from a bad when we don't even know if it's there and i think it's the ray hyman imperative i think it's what it's called where before you start testing something you should know there's a there there to test so until we <laughs> until we try to decide if a ghost is a ghost we need to define define a ghost what is a ghost before we can tell if a psychic is a real psychic we kind of need to know what is a psychic i mean how do you define a psychic so i'm about to call her in five minutes you guys so um anyway i had set up a, a sting for this person and i decided not to um we'll see i was wary of uh you know doing something to really embarrass this person um i thought well maybe i could do a sting on her anyway even though because she's probably not going to ever see this but maybe she will and you know after exchanging emails from her for a while i i kind of think that now this is my impression and i don't we might find out in a few minutes that she believes she is the real thing and like i personally in my belief i don't think that tyler henry and Teresa Caputo and Sylvia Brown and all those people, I don't think they really ever believe they were real. But this person, I think, believes it. And I think that what I'm going to try to do in conversation with her, I hope, because I hope the reading doesn't go on too long. I mean, because, oh my gosh. Um, but <laughs> hopefully a half an hour is going to be my maximum because you're only going to be able to see me. So I'm going to be sitting here trying to do whatever it is she tells me that I need to do to prepare. I don't know if it's meditation or stand on one foot or I, I don't really know what she's going to tell me to do to prepare for this reading. But I'm going to try my darndest not to look sarcastic or whatever, because I, I, I would love to have a reading. Man, my parents might come through. This would be great. I'd absolutely adore to talk to my parents. So um, I am... Oh, so I feel like, and like I said, we'll find out ourselves. You guys will find out at the same time I do. I feel like maybe this is a person who maybe um, 
can come along on the journey of, of learning about critical thinking and, and uh, self-testing yourself. Maybe, maybe not. Um, I don't think that yelling at people and calling them idiots and all that other stuff is, is, helps at all. I think that people need to save face. I think it's very important for the human experience for them not to be told the answer to a question, but to allow them to find the answer to the question and maybe find it, um, you know, you could lead them there. And that's why I think Wikipedia is so important is that we, we want people to, to be able to say, you know, I'm starting to challenge my beliefs a little bit. And I think that maybe there's, um, maybe I should, you know, maybe that doesn't make sense. Maybe I am just talking to myself. Maybe this is all, you know, something I was raised to believe. Um, and, but, you know, maybe, you, and, and then they kind of start getting themselves out of it. I mean, Lord, I know I did because I was not raised a critical thinker at all. And I think probably a lot of you people out there too, you, you know, you were raised in religion and you were raised with uh, maybe anti-vax beliefs or who knows what. I think that most people I meet, other than my kids, probably have never had any kind of, you know, paranormal beliefs or anything like that. So I'm about to call her. The other thing I want to mention really, really quickly is that this woman, she has a website. So obviously she's on some sort of, uh, uh, you know, she does have some technology because it's a nice looking website. She looks like she's had a pretty hard life, uh, but she seems to be really happy now. She has a husband and two kids, small children. She says she's very happy. She does appearances and parties. She also does pet readings. And then she's a medium. And that is where my red flag goes up. Anybody who's claiming to speak to the dead is just, that is just like crossing a line with me. Um, you know, it's one thing to pretend you're psychic or to play a psychic and read card, tarot cards at an event. Yes, that can be a gateway that leads to worse things. But mediumship to me is like really crossing the line. And when you go into psychic detectives and so on, that's even more of a crossing a line, but she's not saying that, but there are a couple serious concerns on her website. And I'm going to try to gen gently ask her about these and get it on record is that she says she can communicate with um, not only dead people, but she's communicating through their energy. She uses energy a lot and she'll tell the, she can communicate with people in comas uh, she can communicate with infants and uh, the embryo in the ba in the mother, and she can uh, communicate with people with autism and uh, cognitive difficulties. Now, those huge red flags right there, that is facilitated communication, except I guess she says that she's doing, you know, without holding their hand, but that's, that's a big deal. Sorry, it's lunchtime for me, guys, so I'm going to try my best not to have my stomach growl. I just had a cheese stick and some crackers and a cookie. So hopefully I'm good. Um, so those are all serious problems with me is whenever somebody is communicating with somebody who cannot communicate back, you know, somebody with severe uh, cognitive dis disabilities and unable to communicate and people who are, I mean, pregnancy, I mean, what? Comas? Really? So I, I'm not okay with that. All right. So I'm about to call her. Now I'm gonna warn you that I can see you on. Um, I can't see. I can see about five of your comments, and then it kind of falls off the screen. Because well, let me see if I can do this real quick. I better do it really quick because I gotta call her. She doesn't have my phone number. I really don't want to have calls. Okay, let me see if I can see this. Ooh, the psychic yes. Oh, hi you guys. Okay, I have to turn up the volume on this because otherwise I'm just listening to myself. It's a little distracting to do it this way because I can see myself in the corner of my eye doing um, 15 seconds ago. <laughs> there I go, wave my hand. Uh, but I think I can see your comments better there. So if you guys give me a really interesting comment, I'm going to have to put it into my own words because she does not know I'm doing a Zoom. She knows I'm recording, but she doesn't know it's live. All right. So, well, she's psychic. So of course she should know. I need to pull up her email because it's got her phone number in here. And remember, I'm going to call her Ray. And I talked to her yesterday. So as far as I know, this is still gone. And I've checked my email several times today and she has not called it off. So 
I hope you can hear it. And I may ask, can you hear her? I'll turn up the volume as far as I can. A couple minutes late. She's in Oregon, so she's probably got her stomach growling too. 409. Hello. Hi, Ray. It's Susan Gerbic. Hey, how are you doing, Susan? Thank you so much for calling. Well, thank you for agreeing to do this. I think this is going to be really interesting. I've been uh, I've been thinking about uh, you know making sure that I don't know what it is you need me to do to prepare. You know, do I need to be in a some sort of state or? No, 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 nothing like that. Actually, um, let me know if when you're recording. Do you start already? Um, yes, I already started okay. recording. That's great. And I also want to make sure you knew that um, I'm okay if you say anything that's personal. I mean, I really, that that's fine. If you were to say, I don't know, get in contact with something that might be embarrassing to somebody else, go, okay. go for it. Okay. <laughs> I usually, before, if I see something like that, I usually say, do you want me to speak frankly or give you a nice reading? No, go ahead and speak frankly. If you see some doom and gloom, I want to know. I'm that type of person. I, I'm the type that wants uh, the truth. Everything, I'm the same way. Um, no, I was going to suggest, did you want to have your friend have the reading first? So you could just kind of hang back and listen and take notes, and then maybe you could you know, have some more things come to you before her re before your reading? Or? Well, uh, my friend wasn't able to show able to show up i'm really sorry to hear that but you know with the uh, pandemic okay. and all that it just didn't yeah. work out because you know so i'm hoping that uh, well we'll see if if, okay. if if we do another one and if she fills up to it and not and and on but anyway i just i'm ready i'm open for whatever you want to say and but i do i'm sure i'm going to have some questions afterwards if that's all right with you yeah so um i like to tell people when i read them for the first time how things kind of work for me um, and then because you are going to use this for some of your research, I will go, as we go along, I'll go into more detail, each thing too. Okay. okay. So how it works for me when I'm reading for someone is I see them in an all white space. Okay. So basically I would see you in an all white space and then things would come up around you and maybe float around that space. People may or may not come in to that space. So I'll tell you what I see, feel, and hear in that space. Okay. Um, so actually a lot of times things don't make sense to me, but they will to the person I'm reading to. So a um, number of times you'll hear me say, does this make sense to you? Like, do you, do you understand this? Does okay. this make sense to you? And by that, I just mean, are you able to identify this information? Okay. Okay. So let me just take a look. Can I have you just take a couple of deep breaths for me, please? Okay. Okay. So it will take like a couple minutes, like two minutes, just for me to get into your energy, just because this is the first time that we've talked and connected. Okay, so the, the first things I'm feeling is kind of an anxious um, energy, an anxious energy. Um, oh, I want to explain this part too. Um, so when I'm going into energy, it's almost like peeling away at an onion. So the first things I see are that outer layer that everyone else sees. So mm -hmm. if I say, oh, um, you know, I see this, you're like, okay, everyone sees that. But then the next layer, it's going to be things that people are close to you know and see. And then the next layer sort of sort of going in further into your energy. So as we go along and I get deeper into your energy, that's where the more personal things are going to come. So I'm quite sure you're not gonna be impressed with the first five to 10 minutes, okay? okay? But bear with me as I get into your energy a little bit more, that things are gonna be more detailed and more um, deeper in your energy, okay? okay. Um, but the first thing I get is that that kind of nervous energy, um, and I feel it in my chest, and I feel that you tend to carry your stress in your chest, where it can get to the point where your energy gets, it's, it's almost hard for you to breathe. Like, I feel like this, like, like that kind of nervous, you know, taking a deep breath, and it kind of shakes on the way out. And also, too, one thing that I notice is that you are 
um, outward um, energy that, that people can kind of see. Sometimes they get the impression that you're this really tough person, like, oh, don't mess with Susan, like, she's tough, she's not here. But you really have this gentle kindness about you. And I think that's just a protectant, protectant of yourself. Because you really have a very kind, genuine spirit, like, especially with little kids and animals and flowers, like, you have a very genuine, kind spirit. But you're not going to take any crap from anybody. And that's that that tough layer that people see. Okay. Um, I'm also getting some diet issues with you, um, and they're health-related. I'm seeing some changes in your diet due to some health concerns. Um, and for some reason, I'm getting this, tell her eggs are good for you. Eggs? Eggs, yeah, because of the calcium. Oh, I thought you meant like my my baby eggs. No, I mean like eggs, like dietary. Oh, okay, gotcha. Because of the high amounts of calcium, um, but I'm getting that message, I need to tell you that, that eggs are good for you because of the calcium, because I'm seeing your calcium is a little bit low okay. also. I feel so much pressure on my chest. Just trying to get through here. So like everyone else in the world, I see you had a trip that was canceled as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I'm seeing now is there is, and this is, comes up with your group that you have. Um, you're not completely satisfied the way things are going. It feels like we're doing the same thing over and over and over again. And I really feel like you're like, we need to move in forward. We need to have something new here that is feeling, you're not feel like you're not, you feel like you're not doing it enough. And it just kind of feels like, it's, it almost feels like you're in border as if you're like standing in a circle and you can't get out of this circle. You know, that's just like, there's more that has to be learned here because you really have a very strong drive. And when you get to a certain point um, and it's not moving further, it can be frustrating. And then you start thinking, okay, well, you know, what other things am I interested in? And I feel that this is not just because of the information, but I feel like there are some people in your group that kind of hold everything back. So it's kind of the, well, this is what we do. You know, this is, Kind of how it is but you know there's more out there and i see that kind of internal um frustration in that office internal office politics thing you know does that honest did you make sense does that make sense to you well sort of okay i don't know how to explain it but i guess a better way to explain it is that your drive while you have the same goals with other people your drive is different your drive is i want to help people and the other drive is I'm someone else's drive or a couple people I feel close to you is that I just want to prove you wrong. And so while you have the same um, developmental concept, the hearts are in different places. And yours, and like I said, you have this very genuine heart to help people. And it feels like you're not doing enough in that area. So hopefully today I will give you some, some, uh, more research to, to kind of see differently with that. Um, but some of the people in your group, their minds are not able to grow, I guess is the way to put it. And then we'll move on from here. Okay. Um, okay, so now I'm seeing more things up in your space. I am seeing a cat walk through your space. 
So you, do you either have a cat or do you know someone who has a cat that's close to you? Yeah. Because the cat is very comfortable walking through your space and it's not leaving your space. So that's why I know it's either yours or someone very close to you because it's very comfortable in your energy. Okay. Um, this is going to sound weird, but is the cat's name related to a witch? Like I'm getting like a witch. Um, they're, they're showing me like a little emblem or like a little hat like close to the cat. A witch? Like a Halloween yeah, witch? Like, like a Halloween, like I'm seeing like a little, um, like a witch hat and broom, like close to that, but small, I mean, close to it, meaning that there was something related to that, to the cat. Like, is there a reference to a, like a witch's cat or, you know what I mean? Like some kind of a, not, I'm just seeing these little. Not that I know of, no. Okay. Not so unless it's some cat then? not not unless it's some obscure reference that I'm not aware of. Okay, it may be. So let's. Uh, Is this a cat that's possible. living or dead? What's that? Is it a cat that's living or dead? I've had many cats in my life. Um, this is a live one. This oh, one okay. is a lot. Okay. So okay, let's move on. But it just keeps giving me this reference to a witch. I don't know if it's, it could be, you know, something that referred to it, or it could be tied to Halloween, but if you're not getting it, let's move on. I don't like to waste time on sure. things that aren't connected. Okay, um, as I kind of go in a little bit further, I am seeing that there is some father issues there. Okay. And it, it's that he, he wasn't an emotional person and it tended to kind of shut down your emotions. Do you know what I mean? Like if, when you were little, and I don't mean like a baby, but I mean as a child, like the crying, like he had no patience. It's like, like his, ability to understand your emotional state from time to time unless mm -hmm. it was something major it's very very difficult for him like he just could not grasp okay i don't know why you're crying because you know if your doll broke it's a doll get over it kind of thing right is this something so, that you see in my childhood or my adulthood or what? um i'm seeing it in the childhood for sure mm -hmm. um but i'm seeing there's more distance um, later on between you. And, and, go ahead. No, I didn't say anything. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, but I'm saying that that was a, a very hard thing to, to kind of grow up with. And the same thing, even older, it's like, you really had a hard time connecting with your emotions and what was important to you. Okay. Even when you had an accomplishment at school, or an extracurricular activity, it was all like, I mean, yay, like, okay, you did that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so he wasn't really emotionally there, but I do see that he was a provider, just not emotionally present. Okay. Um, so now also I'm seeing your mother, um, so I see that, I really see that they've struggled financially. And she worked very hard. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do see that there were issues between them because she, she was more the nurturer and didn't agree with what he was saying, but she, she couldn't say anything. You know, there's a different dynamic at that time. Um, but she would kind of, you know, later like come in and cuddle. I, I see more than just you though. You weren't an only child. I see more than you. How many siblings did you have? I have, um, well, I have a, I have several. Um, it depends on if you're talking about step or half. So what I'm saying Four. now is three. So were there three together in a grouping? Does that include me? Or is that me and three others? That would include you. Yes, okay, there okay. are three, yeah. So that's the grouping I'm seeing. Okay, three people, okay. Okay. Um, 
Um, I'm saying who is tied to the water, the ocean, like they have a job out on the ocean. The, they're tied to either sea or ocean. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying like a large body of water that they're tied to. Of my siblings? Yes. Uh, well, we all live in California and there's a large ocean near us, but uh, not nobody works on the sea. I mean, they're near the sea. I mean, we're, they would have to be able to see it. Are they able to see it? Like, you're not on like East California, are you? Because I'm seeing them close, close to the water. No, we're, I mean, if they drove a little bit, they could see it, but they can't see it from their windows or anything like that. But I mean, oh, but, but I mean, they're on the, my point is they're not inland, right? They're not on the East side of California. No, no. Okay. Let me just take a look. Oh, so I forgot to mention this too. So I like to, in the beginning, tell the person what I'm seeing first, like what comes up first, like I'm doing for you. Um, and then when you have questions, what it looks like to me, it's almost as if a big roadmap opens. And the major, like if you imagine what a roadmap looks like, the major cities obviously are busier, more roads go to there. When you say, okay, I want to look at... Uh, my career, or I want to look at finances, I literally scan across that map and look for that area. So while there's a lot of things on there, um, I, it helps me to know what I'm looking for. Okay. Does that make sense? Sure. So, it's a visualization. Sure. Yeah. Okay, let me just take a look and see what else kind of comes up for you. Is there anything, that, or any questions that you have right now? I'm just, I'm curious just to see where it goes. Now, Okay. You just, do you just tell me what you see and it's what it is. Okay, let me just keep looking because there still isn't a whole lot in your space right now. So I want to get in a little bit um, deeper. Okay, one of the things, this is one of the weird things I know else can come up, but you're really not great at putting laundry away. Because I'm seeing more kind <laughs> of laundry coming up. And like laundry is not a strong suit. Um, you know, hanging things up and 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 that is an odd things. thing, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of weird things come up sometimes, but it's just kind of wasting your energy. Um, um and I do see that you do like to cook or would like to cook more and you just don't have a lot of opportunity to do that now um but i'm do think that as i see this i'm seeing more live plants around you so i don't know if this is a garden or that you like to have fresh fruits and vegetables produce but i'm seeing a lot of plants coming around you about this yes Okay, so did you have a health scare that caused your diet to change? Because again, as the diet comes up, I'm seeing it's health related. Um, I've had medical problems in the past, but I can't think of anything that's changed my diet other than just, you know, common sense time to change my diet. But not, yeah. <laughs> no, I haven't had a health scare that has involved my diet changing, I don't no, I don't but think so. Changing as far as like sodium and cholesterol, like being more aware of the kinds of food that you're eating. So I'm seeing a shift and not like an immediate shift, like, okay, I have to start doing this now. But I would say probably, I would say about a two to three year change, like from where your original diet was to like three years later, it's completely different. Not different as in you don't eat meat anymore, but I mean different as in like eating fresher foods, you know, going more with the fresh produce and just being more health awareness. Okay. Um, why is the basement coming up? I'm getting a basement reference here. Oh, a basement. That's interesting. Yeah, this is a basement reference. So there's something recent with the basement reference. This is one of those things I don't understand. Does uh, this make sense to you, the basement a reference? A basement? No. No. I find it interesting because generally there aren't a lot of basements on the West Coast. No. This is why it's interesting that it's coming up. Um, yeah. 
so if it's not a literal basement, then it could be a metaphorical basement. And so we need to look closer at that. But sure. it's unusual for a basement to come up if you're in California. So I'm actually getting this tied to your youth. In the my, past. my youth? Mm -hmm. Oh, a basement? Yes. Are we... house you lived in when you were a kid, it had a basement. No. There was stuff down there, and I'm also seeing that you felt very uncomfortable down there. It was like one of those typical scary like basements that. Yeah, I've always found basements scary. They're you know dark and yeah. And that may come to you later. But okay. Again, because let's just kind of keep going. With energy, um. A person's energy is very related to their personality. And so if a person is kind of closed or if they're very guarded, mm -hmm. it's more difficult to get to their energy. It takes a little bit longer. Um, if they're more open, um, then obviously it's easier. Can I take another deep breath for me, please? Then more things come up in your space, but there isn't a whole lot coming up right now. So I'm gonna keep keep looking. Um, you don't have any questions yet? Um, not not specifically. I'm, I'm no. There's, I'm, I mean, I'm really interested in what you're gonna find. That's great. Yeah. That's what I was kind of hoping to read for the other person first, because oh, no, that sorry. way you can you know, kind of, kind of see, because you I said you had a lot of readings and I don't know how those have, what kinds they were, but I can kind of tell that that's kind of given a, a different perspective for you that you've had so many that it's, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It hasn't allowed you to be open because you've been disappointed a lot. Okay. Um, more nature stuff coming up around you, but it's beautiful stuff like flowers, like not a hiking, like, you know, camping in the middle of nowhere, but just beauty. So I'm seeing a lot of flowers around you. Yeah, I love flowers. But I see you also like to plant them too, like outside and stuff. Um, and pink is particularly like a, a fuchsia pink. A fuchsia pink. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's very pretty. So now I see the cat coming through again. This is your cat. You have a cat now, right? Yes. This is your uh -huh. cat. It's connected to you because I see you talking to it a lot. Yeah, that's that's true. And I'm also getting a T reference. A tea, like drinking tea or the tea yeah, like letter? Drinking tea. tea. Oh, yeah. Drinking tea reference. But it's connected with the cat, too. So, what I'm seeing is this is a relaxed thing, like you and the cat at home with tea. Like it's just, you know, it's more relaxed. It's not, I'm not seeing you like at work drinking tea. This is a relaxed setting. But the cat really helps because you certainly tell the cat a lot of things that you probably could tell other people. And you just talk to it casually, like watching TV, like, hey, you know. So I, I can connect with that also, I get that. So now you had two cats prior that passed, but there were two cats. It wasn't just a single cat. Yeah, I've had many cats. I mean, you had two at the same time. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm getting that there is a sibling that you guys own. Uh, really see eye to eye on. 
don't really get along that's best to keep distance from each other that you don't talk too much okay um and i'm seeing that coming up to your left so how i see generations for people is i see them on levels so i would see you at the first level and your parents and then you know, at the next upper level and then again grandparents and then you know below you would be you know children but usually the first time reading for is that first level and then i'll see and then i'll be able to tell that's how i know what generation it is okay is it they're standing next to you or above you okay So they're telling me that your past animals are with you. So do you have like ashes or are they buried somewhere close to you? Because they're telling me that past pets are with you. No. Then in, them in spirit, have you noticed? Um, sometimes you feel something like on you where you feel like something a cat would do and you're like, oh, that wasn't even the cat. Because I'm seeing that they're with you, like past pets are with you. Okay. Okay, let's let's look at a question and see if that's gonna open up any of your energy a little bit. More. Okay. So it's almost as if your energy is like handing me one thing at a time. Okay. <laughs> and I wanna be able to see more than just that one thing at a time. Okay. Okay, so do you have a question? Well, let's see. What do you see for my love life? Okay. Um, well, the first thing that kind of comes forward is that that last one had to go. And you're like, you tolerate as much as you could, but he had to go. So there, there's still some of that kind of remnants there, like, you know, looking for a new love life, but I don't see that that's something, this is not something you're in pursuit of. Okay. It, you feel content right now. You're not a person that has to constantly be searching for someone else to make you a whole. Okay. But I feel some content with you. But I'm also seeing someone close to you. But I'm seeing someone close to you. Okay. That's good. I like that. So I'm seeing taller with short hair. Taller with short hair. Okay. Yes. Dark hair, light hair, no hair. Well, you said hair. No hair, but it, it's a lighter color. It's not like blonde, but it's not black. It's not dark brown. It's a lighter color. So not blonde, not brown. So gray. Yeah. So yeah, like a salt and pepper, or maybe even um, like some light brown with some silvering do you know what i mean it's but it's not i'm not seeing a one solid color up here okay so salt and pepper yeah it looks like salt and pepper but it could be you know like some light brown with some silvering in it okay that's cool um, but it's short and he's taller taller than me or just taller like in general taller than you okay yeah because i get the feeling your energy that you're not real tall okay by for a woman i guess i'm average well i would if i were to guess at a height i would say below five eight yes mm -hmm. i am below five eight so i'm 
because I'm like, again, I'm just looking at you in that space and kind of where you are. So if I had to guess, if, I, if you said, sincerely, tell, oh, sorry, I said my name. <laughs> if you said, Ray, tell me, what is your best understanding or perspective of my height? I would have to say around 5'5". Five, five. Okay, five, that's four, pretty close. Four, I mean, that's good. That kind of a yeah. thing. And so I'm seeing him taller than that. So I would have to guess about 5'10". To six foot, like right, right around there. Okay, that's great. A tall, gray-haired, salt-peppered man. Cool. Yeah, and he likes to golf. Um, oh, cool. He also has. Um, he's retired, but he still does some work with a, a company. Okay, that's great. Um, and he's very comfortable financially. Golfing too. That's cool. There's a lot of golfing around here. Oh, good. I actually live right next to a golf course, so I get all the golfing I need. I mean, I don't play, but I mean all the all the golf balls. I should say, I get. Um, I also see boating with him. That he owns a boat. Seriously, that'd be great. Let's see. He's got a couple of kids that are obviously grown. Okay, yes. Uh -huh. that, don't want to raise any babies anymore. <laughs> Grandkids? I, Grandkids? Now, do you have any now? Because I'm seeing one that's close by. Grandkids? Mm hmm Oh, okay. No. Okay, so there's one that's going to be coming. You'll find out by the end of the year. Wow. So yeah, grandkids are real close for you, but there's one that's coming soon. Like you you'll find out by the end of this year. Oh, that'd be great. Um, trying to see if I can see any more on this guy. I'd like to try to see if I can find some type of location or even um a time. Yeah, a time frame would be nice. He's a guy that doesn't sit still, so be prepared for that. He's not one of these guys that, you know, likes to watch TV and puts around the yard. He's not that guy. He's a guy that likes to travel and be active. Okay, that'd be fun. So just be prepared for that. He's not one of those homebodies. Okay, that's good. And his health looks really good. So that's not a, a worry. Oh, fantastic. Um, and he's going to still be friends with his ex. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Right? They have a good relationship, I hope. Yeah. Do you see it? Do you see a time frame? I'm, I'm looking for okay. a time frame. I'm trying to... I'm just being impatient, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's very... Um, active, like he travels a lot, and it's hard to see how, how I look. Okay, so this is more information for you. Okay. So how I see time, so there's no time on the other side, right? That's here for us in the physical. Right. Um, so in order for me to see time, what I do is I look for identifying markers. Like I look for holidays, you know, Christmas, Easter, like that kind of stuff, Fourth of July. Like I look, not Fourth of July, because sometimes my I clients out of the country. But I look for holidays. And I look for weather, which, as you know, weather doesn't always work as well, but the holidays are usually where. But this guy travels a lot. I'm seeing him in, I mean, like travel, travel, like different country travel. And so it's making it a little bit harder for me to see um, because I do, the United Arab Emirates is coming up. And oh. I'm, I'm getting some like Caribbean travel. Like I'm seeing him in this really beautiful boat um, and traveling a lot. So it's, I'm trying to get him in one spot. You know what I mean? So I can kind of look what's yeah. there. Yeah. Check him out. Give me a name. 
zero in on him. <laughs> Let's see. I'll try. focus on time here. Like in the next year, by Christmas, you know. Yeah, I'm saying by Christmas of next year. Oh, 2021. Yeah, but I'm I'm not sure if I'm seeing it like summer or spring of next year. Yeah, there's yeah, kind of a lockdown. Not, it makes it difficult right now. Yeah, 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 it does. So the United Arab Emirates comes into this somehow in the Caribbean. It, yeah, the Caribbean. So these are places that he's traveled to or that he's gone. So it's something like that. He's even though he's retired, he's still involved with this business, and so he will. I don't know how, like, he's retired as he doesn't go to work all the time, but he's still involved with it. Fantastic. So he's one of the, the upper tiers of that company. Oh, okay. So it's getting really hard for me to narrow it down, but by Christmas of next year, it's just, it's hard to see. With, actually, with the COVID, I think it has changed everyone's energy. Oh, yeah. I, it's changed I bet. the energy of the earth. Uh -huh. It's been crazy. Um, okay, so so that's the information on him. As far as names, the only thing I'm getting close is like Alex or Alexander. Um, but again, I want to let you know that that I'm not sure if that's his name or I mean he has a boat. It could be the name was boat. Just be aware of Alex. It may not be his name. But Alex right or Alexander. Down is a no. Okay, so it's Alex something that Alexander. okay, Alexander. You know, I do want to ask about my grandparents. Can, what, can you see anything? Uh, you're a medium as well, so do, are you seeing anything for my grandparents? Um, I have, they haven't come into your space yet, but because I read energy, what I'll do is if someone has to ask about someone, I'll have them say their full name, and that will pull their energy into theirs. Oh, okay. And so I'll be able to look this year. Okay, so if I say my grandfather's name, hopefully he'll come into this conversation. Right. Okay, so we'll start with your grandfather. What's his name? John uh Frank John Gerbic. Frank John Gerbic. Mm hmm Do they jump right in? Hang on. Okay, so I have to stand up for this to explain because he is a large man. He's, he's not one of these small guys. He's he's big. He's like six foot and strong. He's was a hard, a very hard worker in his life. And I see his. He's showing me these hands are these massive hands like these huge hands but they're working man's hands with the calluses and all these things does this make sense to you are you identifying oh maybe okay so so this is what i'm seeing is that he's um i, I just see like this I don't know how to describe it, but all I can think of is this working man um, with these, you know, the, the broad shoulders and the, the thick hands that, that they're so muscular. And he, he was a quiet person. He didn't do a lot of talking and stuff like that, but when he did, you listened. It was, everyone listened. It was, he was a no-nonsense person. And not no nonsense as in just a jerk, just as in like, this is the right way to do it, let's do it that way. And, you know, this is how it's done, do it correctly. Mm -hmm. So it's no nonsense as in no playing around. Like, we don't do things that are good enough, it has to be done correctly. Uh, and we'll, breakfast is coming in with him also. Breakfast, he likes a good breakfast, eggs and sausage and that kind of hearty um, breakfast. He likes those eggs, huh? I got it. Good for calcium. <laughs> yeah, good for calcium. Um, so this is what he's showing me. Okay. And just, what did you want to, to know? Did you want to ask him anything? Or? I'd, I'd like to know, um, you know, how he 
feels about our relationship and how, you know, just, just anything he wants to tell me. So he's telling me that you guys ate popcorn as when you were little. He's bringing that in. He's also bringing that you would stay over. So what he's doing is he's bringing in these memories of things that you did. Oh, um, okay. Together. Uh huh. Because he's saying this is this is what our relationship was. Because you guys almost had like your own little language between the two of you. Like you could just look at each other and knew each other what was thinking. Oh, that's 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 great. You know, and you guys would also have you'd kind of be up to something. You know what I mean? Like it just made sure you're like, hey, you know what I mean? Like you would have these little things you'd be up to. You had really an amazing relationship, and you feel like he understood you much better than your own father. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Um, where's the dog? Does he have a dog? I'm seeing a dog around him. No, no. Uh... This is this is a dog like the size of a black lab. Like that size of a dog. Not a little dog, not a huge dog, but just that kind of... But it's coming through the space with him. Maybe when he was little and I didn't know about it. That could be. And so your grandma wore an apron. Yeah, my grandmother, both sets of grandparents, grandmothers wore aprons, yep. Because he's showing me the apron and he's saying that she, that she could cook, although he said he didn't always appreciate it because the roast was dry. Oh. <laughs> so the day in Magana, because I'm seeing fresh produce around your grandmother. Uh, Yeah. And he liked to fish. Fishing? A, a boat, a rowboat. A rowboat, okay. He's just going out fishing. But he just keeps showing me these really beautiful images of the time that the two of you spent together. Because even though um, you had other siblings, you were the one. You, you were the favorite, the one that spent more time with him. And he didn't love anybody more than anybody else. He said you guys had more time together because you value his time. Yeah, that that makes sense. Did you see him on the ocean, um, like fishing on the ocean, deep sea fishing, or or just like? Um, I saw a small boat, like a um one that you would paddle. I didn't, I didn't see a big okay. boat. I saw a small boat. Um, but he keeps showing me these really lovely images of you and him and just the time starts together and sometimes you would be coloring you know he'd be watching the news and you'd be you know writing and drawing or something but he really wants to emphasize that the relationship with you was was not only was it beautiful and wonderful but the other siblings didn't really they're like oh you know they're old i want to go over there stuff to do kind of thing but you really valued that time with them Okay. All right, let's see your... How about you shift to like, unless you see something else important from, from, a, from Frank, um, how do you, do you also see like the, what's going on in the world? Like, can you tell us when we think we might be with a vaccine or are we gonna even need a vaccine? Um, or do you see that well, kind of sometimes. stuff? Sometimes. So because I read energy, what I, I go through, obviously, other people's energy and what I can see, whether it may or may not connect to them. But just an example, um, in April, I did a reading for a man in Pennsylvania, and he asked me what is coming up. And I told him, in, excuse my English, but in May, I said, stay inside because it's about to go down. Like, all hell is going to break loose. It's about to go down. In his life or in general? In May. I said in general. In May for everybody. Oh, like for everybody. For everybody. Okay. I said, yeah, May is going to be really bad. And I just, I said, all I see is people in chaos, but I don't know what's, what, where it's oriented from. Like, I don't know where the origin is coming from or what's happened. And then, um, you know, May was kind of going by just dealing with COVID. And then when all the riots hit, um, he called me. He said, hey, um, I thought about what you said because this was, you know, and that was the identifying thing. So 
that's just an example of like I could see the chaos and I could see all this bad stuff that's gonna happen, but I couldn't identify where it was because it wasn't connected to him. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's just general <laughs> chaos. Right. So so that's what I'm saying. Like I can kind of look and I may be able to tell you something that's there, but if I'm not able to see, you know, what's orienting it or what's or causing it. Um, so ask your question again, will you please? Well, what is the, what do we foresee this pandemic? Are we, are we going to see a vaccine? Are we going to see it in uh, there January? There will be a vaccine, but it won't be as soon as they're anticipating. Oh. I'm not saying it till the end of the year. The end of this um, year? Know, the end of this year, yep. Oh, that's pretty good. I, I'd go for that. Um, I know they were um, saying that it would be sooner, but I'm not saying it hit the general public until in mass production until the end of this year okay and it'll um, be effective kind of we're going to be through this and 2021 will be like a normal year yeah things will definitely be getting better toward the end of this year um i'm thinking more like september october where things are going to start getting back to normal quote unquote normal you know we're not going to see life as we did before covid uh -huh. um the plexiglass will be everywhere and it will stay that way. Okay. It will always be everywhere. Um, but it's also going to change the dynamic of how people interact. Um, you know, I keep saying with us having to stay with each other, you think people get along better, and it just it doesn't work that way. You know, it just doesn't happen. So unfortunately, because that is what's occurring, people still aren't able to get along well. I don't see the socialization back until probably the end of next year like i don't see people letting their guard down at least by summer of next year 2021 okay 2021 yeah because people are, are still going to throughout the beginning of next year still going to be like okay is this person infected because right now it's who's infected who isn't we don't know and so even though there'll be a vaccine people are still gonna keep a distance mm -hmm. and i definitely see that to the beginning of next year Okay. So I am seeing a big upset for Florida um, politically. I'm seeing a big upset for them. Um, let's see. Let's, can we narrow it down a little bit? I'm, I'm well, how do you see, over. how do you see for, um, well, I don't know. Uh, everything's of interest to me. Oh, we'll just, can you look at, the general for the United States, or do we need to go more statewide? Uh, well, let me take a look. So that was the general as far as like COVID goes. Mm -hmm. um, hang on a sec. I'm seeing something really weird, like around the end of this year. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm, so, so what I'm seeing, it maybe you can help me understand this a little bit. So what I'm seeing is the end of November of this year, mm -hmm. of this year before Christmas, and a lot of what I'm seeing is related to this, um, like the the shopping, the Black Friday stuff, and all this. Um, but I'm seeing a, it's almost as if. Because stores are going to be limiting how many people are allowed in even then. Oh, okay. Black Friday is probably going to be very different from what we've seen in the past. Yeah, it's, it's going to be very different. But what I'm seeing is going to be much more organized. Like it's going to be some stores, like the, the more upscale stores that are more private, um, they're going to be taking appointments for people to come in and shop. You know, like, oh, you can book a time here mm -hmm. um and other ones a lot of the large um chain stores like walmart target those kinds of things they'll be doing the same thing they did when covid was the the, the in the beginning where everything was you only limited to so many people in the store and so there'll be a lot of long lines with that mm -hmm. um but i'm seeing more I'm seeing more unrest with people. I'm seeing it in the, the north of the Midwest and on the West Coast mostly. And I'm seeing more of these riots and more of these um, protests and those kinds of things. 
but again, I'm saying it north of the Midwest. So like Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, Illinois, like that area I'm seeing. Okay. And then Oregon and California, where they're going to have another one of these riots, protests, like what we just had with this other thing. Yeah, it's been horrible. Out. It's just horrible. Yeah, they. I live right outside of Portland, and they brought the military in last week. That made me want to cry. I, I can't even imagine. It's just horrible. It's yeah, crazy. It's like a war zone. Do you see? Do you see a change in government this uh, in November, and like a peaceful transformation of power in January? Do you, can oh, you see that kind of stuff? Let me. Because that would be interesting to know. Yeah, let me see. When you say take a look, can I ask you, are you using like a pendulum or are you using oh, some no. kind of aid? I'm sorry, I should have explained that. I don't use any tools. Okay. I don't use cards or a pendulum or anything like that. Um, I literally just go through energy. Okay, so it's like you yeah, meditate I, or something, you kind of get this um, concentrate? You know, not, not even really. It's just like I'm looking into I don't even know how to explain it, but it's almost like I'm looking into a different part of my brain. It's it's weird. Like I'll, when people I do their um, readings in person, mm -hmm. when they look at me, like they'll tell me like, "Wow, it looks so interesting to see you work." And sometimes they say that my eyes move really fast as I'm looking around at things. And and um, like one of the things that I'll do when I'm reading in person is I put my hand on their wrist, so my my complete palm will be like on the top of their wrist and it gives me an immediate connection to their energy. And there have been times, like there was one time I was reading for a girl and as soon as I put my hand on her wrist, I yanked it back because it felt like I was touching a stove. And I'm like, did you just burn your hand recently while you're cooking? And she was wearing long sleeve and she pulled up her sleeve on her other arm and she had a small burn on her forearm. She was, yeah, yesterday. Oh, wow. So it's with in person, I get immediate connection if I can hold on to the wrist because I, I can literally, you know, connect with their energy. Um, on the phone, like I said it takes a couple minutes. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, but when I say let me look, um, I'm looking at that map again. So remember okay. how I said about I'm looking at a map? Right. And that's sort of like the roadmap of, I guess, your life or like your experience, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, but for the political stuff, I have to, um, I tend to avoid politics actually because yeah, but do you too see? Depressing and yeah, but do you feel like a change is coming in that we're going to have a? I mean, because I, I mean, I totally understand not telling me who's going to be president or whatever. But do you? It seems like there would be a huge if we keep the same administration we have right now, or if it's like going to be a huge shift in change. Um, yeah. I mean, Let me that see would be. I can see anything. I'm, because as we're talking, Trump is, his heart is failing. Like, I'm seeing that the walls of his heart are becoming very thin. Ooh. Um, okay. And if, if he goes another presidency, I'm not sure he would survive it, to be honest. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Because I'm seeing he's, his heart from the stress levels and all this stuff, the man has a temper. And so as our temper raises and we get really excited about things, it stresses our heart out. Yeah, I can see that. I'm sure that that but, would be a very stressful job. Oh yeah, I won't wish that on anybody. Um, but if, if Trump wins, he may not survive it. Let's put it that way. His heart is very problematic right now and you know with proper care and rest you know it could be fine but i'm seeing a serious issue with his heart um let me just look at the presence and see if i can see i still see a lot of fighting between houses okay that doesn't surprise me and as I look further out, I'm seeing that continuing probably to the end of time. Like it's really going to be a thing. And unfortunately, you know, that's clearly not going to cause a lot of problems for the rest of the country. Um, who's the who's the lady that knows everything or thinks she knows everything that keeps doing these um 
gosh, I can, is it Pelosi, right? Pelosi? Yeah, Pelosi. Pelosi, right? She's in the, I don't know, is she, is she? Nancy Pelosi? What her title is, yeah. She's the uh, Speaker of the House. That's it, thank you. Um, but there's going to be a big outing on her where, because right now she's kind of the person who wants to put the spotlight on everyone else. And there's going to be a big outing on her um, in the next, um, what do they call it, the four years, the next presidential term? Another election? Um, no, it'll be after the election. It'll be in the presidential term. So within the next four years of the next presidential term, um, she's going to have, there's going to be a big outing and she's going to be out. Like she's doing a lot of shady stuff. But people aren't looking because she's distracting so much by accusing others. Okay. But she'll be found out. So Nancy Pelosi, and it, it looks like about two years of what I'm saying. Oh. Is, is that there's going to be a big thing around her about all this stuff, and it's going to be exposed. Okay, that's interesting. Two years. Yeah. Um. For some reason, I'm getting the Garden State, and that is New Jersey, right? The yeah. State. Yeah. Is she from there? Nancy Pelosi? I don't know. I don't know. It's, but that's coming up. As, as soon as I said that about her outing, I got the Garden State. So that's somehow uh, connected. So maybe some scandal or something will happen, or maybe they'll vote her out or something. She'll have a. No, she's. It won't be a vote out, but she'll be out. Like, it'll be. Yeah, this is not a voting thing where like, oh, we don't like Greenberg, we're going to vote for someone else. This is, she's going to get in, in, a lot of things she's doing, I guess, busted. That, oh, <laughs> so she's not going to die in New Jersey, right? That's not what you're seeing. No, I, I don't see her dying. What I see is her getting caught with a lot of stuff she's doing that no one knows right now. Oh, and it's tied because to New Jersey. She's always pointing the finger to someone else and saying, hey, look at this, look at that. But she's distracting from the stuff that she's doing. And those things will be found out in two years. Okay. And that's when it'll be a, it will be a removal of her. It won't be like a voting out. It'll be a removal of her. Okay. Um, I'm trying to see if I can see anything with the presidency. And, you know, sometimes I just can't. You know? Yeah. So it's just. So what do you see when you see energy? What do you, how do you define energy? Is it like a, a feeling or is it like a thing that can be measured? Um, or? What it feels like is almost like stepping into someone's room. You know what I mean? So if you go to someone's house and if you step into their bedroom, you know, you kind of get that weird feeling like, should I be here? Should I not be here? This is a private place. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like, usually you kind of want to step back, right? Like, I don't want to be in here. Like, this is their private. And that's kind of the feeling that I get when I step into someone's energy. It's like, first, they're like, okay, let me, let me get my bearings here. And, you know, but it's that, it, it's hard to explain, but it's that feeling of, of um, consciousness. It's like this awareness of it. You know, I've had people like, oh, can you get in the energy of a celebrity? I don't do that. That's yeah. they're private people. You know, same thing. Or they'll ask, I've had people ask, can you talk to a celebrity who's passed? That's not what I do. Like, I'm not going to just go, you know, disrespect their privacy, no matter if they're alive or not, just so you can see what they're doing. You right. Know? Do you feel like that you get, like it's, when you make a, when you say, say something that you feel like it's, do you, do you have like a scale of how confident you are on, um, like a scale of one to 10 or something on, or is it just, uh, I mean, how, how sure are you of some things or can you, can you judge that? Like sometimes you'll say, oh, I feel that this might be a two on a scale of one to 10 or other times you might feel like this is a nine or a 10 out of 10. If I see it clearly, I'm confident in it. Okay. If I see it clearly. Um, if I don't, like with the dog around your granddad, I didn't see it that well. I'm like, okay, I see this dog. I don't know where it is. You know, so like that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. okay, I know there was a dog there, but I don't know how it connects. But you, but like when we ate popcorn together, that felt, yeah, that felt, yeah, because 10 it's almost out like of 10. so many parts of a movie, you know, okay. how those old films 
where the people would have the the real to real films mm -hmm. and the big screen. It's kind of like that. Like he was showing me like little bits of movies, okay. like with the popcorn and with the just how you guys would smile. And I just he gave me that connected feeling. So when I say that feeling of like being connected, he I would literally get the feeling of that happiness that you two shared. Okay. But the same thing when I first got into your energy, I like felt a lot of tightness in my chest. I was like, okay, like I, I had to just kind of get that deep breath. And that's why I had to take some deep breaths to kind of relax your energy a little bit. Mm -hmm. So when it's something that's very clear to me, then I'm absolutely sure. Okay. And yeah, okay, good. Um, but like I said, with the, like when I had spoke with a client in April about there's something in May that's going to be like astronomical and it's going to be you know, this chaos and all this stuff i didn't know that it was rise i just saw all these people in this chaos i didn't know what's causing it so that time it's like it's sometimes it's like that like i know this is here but i'm not sure how it's connected i'm not sure what happens to cause that right gotcha so ray are you do you are you, i have some other questions that i want to ask you that are more like i have more one about, more thing for oh, you you oh, need sure. a new pillow oh you, you need a new pillow. Okay, I can get myself a new pillow. Um, because I'm getting that kind of feeling like where, where the neck kind of gets sore, but it's like up by your scalp, or not scalp, but um, the bottom of your head. <laughs> okay. The um, the the base of your skull, right? Like right there, and where your neck is, where I'm getting some of that pain. That's because you need a new pillow. Okay. You know what? I did. I did want to ask you about my grandmother on my mother's side. Do, okay. Are you getting anything from her? Her name is uh, her name is Myrtle De, uh, Finley. Is do you think maybe you could get like a quick word with her? You said Myrtle Finley. Mm -hmm. That was her maiden name. Okay. All right. Let me see if I can connect with her now. Okay, give me a second. Sure. Because I'm feeling a strong energy, but I'm not I'm not seeing her yet, so I'm not connected with I'm not sure she was connected with her. Um, but she was a tough lady. Is this is my connection with the right person? Uh, She's very tough. Okay. Yeah. Um, a strong person. I'm also getting like a farm working, working on a farm kind of thing. Yeah. But she, she was a very tough person, you know. Um, it kind of reminds my my husband said that either my wife will pray for you in a minute, but she'll also shoot you dead. Oh. <laughs> <And> <laughs> that's the kind of feeling I'm getting with her. Okay. You know, it's just that um, she had a good, solid heart, but life was very matter of fact. It wasn't emotions. It wasn't, oh, I'm tired. I guess I won't do this. No, it was very matter of fact. This has to get done. This has to get done. This has to get done. She, she works very hard. Um, and sometimes that will so, she would expect other people to work as hard as her and no one can convince her that she needs to take a break. Does that make sense to you? I Yeah, I guess. Seems like it, so yeah. It's, what's that? I, yeah, I think so. Um, so what did you want me to look at specifically? Just does she have any words for me or any guidance or information or anything? Okay, before I ask that, did they eat rabbit? I'm getting a rabbit connection and she's saying it was good. Um, possibly, I don't know. Okay, it's just kind of a weird thing for all of a sudden to get that. That is weird, okay. So I know that was, because sometimes they'll say things just to validate you know, hey, you know, this would. I never had any rabbit with her or anything like that, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay, ask your question again. I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, that what is? Does she have any advice? Does she have any messages okay. or any kind of insight or anything? <sighs> okay, so. So, this is one of those things like I, you know, 
at least I'm a little bit hesitant to say some things that they say, but she didn't oh. like the man you had children with. Oh, okay. So, that was the first thing that she says, I don't like the man she had children with. That's fine. Um, um, give me a second. I'm having a hard time with just asking her something directly. I'm not, I'm not getting a lot of words from her. Like I got that clear as day. She said that, but then it's like, she's working again. Like I'm seeing like these, it's almost like wooden crates that she's putting produce in and carrying them. It's a weird image that I'm seeing. Not that weird, just unusual. I haven't seen it before, but she still keeps like working. Um, and I'm also saying that she sews, like she was so like close and so. Okay, you wanna know if she has any advice. Advice or memory she wants to share with me, something like that, or I, I don't even know what to, I would ask her. She is bringing up swimming, but it's swimming, not in the ocean, swimming in this small, almost like a pond or like a little, it's very small. But it was, so she's bringing that, but I'm only, I'm seeing you small at the time, like four or five, six, like right on there, probably not six, but four or five. Yeah, she's another, one of those that would have, that has like really, guarded energy not guarded but closed you know what i mean she's just so she she with her own family she was on a personal level with them but other people in general she didn't talk personal with other people in general hmm. so i'm just trying to get her to say something other than she didn't like the guy you had children with So no, she is making a reference that one of the children did not start school at the right age. That they should have started school earlier. One of my children? Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure if that's a you know birthday compared to the end of the year type of thing, like a certain date had to be the birthday or they just started later. But she is making reference to one of them starting later, not when they should have. Okay. Did, did she have a heart pump? I'm having a lot of pain in my chest, and I don't know if that's just from her, or that's why I'm having a hard time um, getting into her, to her to say something. But I, it's weird, though. It's like I don't feel it on the left side. I feel it, like, right down the center. No. Of my, of my chest. I feel like pressure. It almost feels like... It almost feels like indigestion. You know how you get like heartburn or something that's real painful? And that's kind of what I'm getting with her, is that feeling. Um, but I, yeah, I'm not, she's not really singing much. Like, maybe you could ask her, so you said a memory? See so if she can give a memory maybe? Yeah, a memory that she'd like to share with me or something. Um, they keep, I keep getting um, a farm reference. Does she have a farm? Oh, yeah. Oh, there's my farm. Okay. So I keep getting these farm reference. And I'm seeing a donkey. So. Donkeys, I'm always hesitant to mention because a lot of times they're metaphorical for someone that they thought was an ass. Okay. So. I don't, don't know who that would be. So I'm hoping that this is literal for her. Um, but I am seeing a donkey. Oh, but I'm seeing someone who worked on their farm. 
this wasn't run just by family. I'm saying there were helpers. There were people who worked on the farm and one actually stayed on the property. Okay. Yeah, I, I can't get anything out. I don't know if she's just not saying anything or I'm just not seeing it or okay. hearing it. But. Well, Ray, this has been really interesting. Um, if, you, if you don't mind, I can I ask you a few questions about just like your website and in general information? Just Sure. Okay. So uh, um, you answered a lot of the questions that I had as, as you're going about like how you feel energy or what you see as energy and and like I thought you might be using a pendulum or something like that but so when you reached out to me originally you kind of said that uh, you know I felt like you were trying to say that that uh, you yourself are a skeptic about um, people who say they can give readings and that you were um, I think you see that there are people within the field of mediumship that are clearly frauds and that there must be some way of kind of telling them apart. Am I, is that accurate? Well, I'm, so I mean, without naming names. Much more experience than I do. Uh -huh. um, and so I, and that's one of the reasons I like to explain in the beginning about how I see people in the space, because that's how it works for me. And so I don't know how things either do or don't work for other people. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, the, the only thing that I know is that a friend of mine sent me that the New York Times article. Right. And, and so that's what I wanted to connect with you because I got the impression that it was believed that there was no one that possessed any kind of gift or ability. And I was like, you know, let me see if I can connect with it because when I read the article and the stuff that you were doing and you had these groups and you put this together on the face, I thought, this is amazing. This is a woman that is like... You know, I want not only, you know, want to stop these people from hurting other people, but I want to understand what they're doing. Okay. And so because you put so much thought, so much research and all that, I was like, you know, maybe I can help because or at least I want to at least offer something to your research. Mm -hmm. And saying, like I said, like, this is how, what I see, this is what I feel. Um, and I was really hoping to um, lead for your friend because then you could just kind of see how it works with someone that, um, you know, kind of comes in without any expectations. Do you sure. know what I mean? Yeah, sure. It, it would be more open. Um, but yeah, the uh, the last email that I sent you, uh -huh. um, I mentioned that there's an acquaintance that I met here out in Oregon, and he reads cards. Oh. And, you know, tarot card reading, anyone can do it. You, you buy a box, you read the book, you flip the cards. Okay. And they can pick up on energy. You know, they do. But it, tarot cards are like a forecast. Like, oh, things are going to be better around this time of year. This, you know what I mean? So it's a forecast of things are what to come. They're not very specific. They're, they're generally more vague. Um, I'm sure you've had some tarot right, cards. Sure. Right, sure. So you kind of see the difference with that. Um, but at any rate, this person said, hey, they are doing these, they, they have these events um, here, and I'm sure everywhere, but he's like, you know, if you want to share a table with me, that's what it was, he wanted to share a table. I was like, oh, sure, you know, I haven't done that stuff since I was in my 20s. And so I went, and a lot of them um, trade readings like when they're not busy, like if it's, there's not much going on, sure. they'll kind of go around and talk in those trade readings with each other. Yeah, I've heard of that, yeah. Um, and I don't, just because I've been disappointed so much mm -hmm. by these readings, and so I'll do their reading, and they're happy and impressed, this is really great, and then they'll do the reading for me, and I'll just be like, okay, thank you, it, you know, <laughs> nothing connects, nothing validates. Mm -hmm. And so I see these people that come into these um, fairs, these metaphysical fairs and events and stuff, and a lot of them are looking for hope. They're looking for understanding. They're looking for direction. And so when I see them, um, it's frustrating because, you know, I could just had a reading from someone and it was terrible. And now I see people going to them and they're not, they're paying money to not get any information, to get any hope. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, sure. And I have some clients that have um, seen 
Um, for sure, the Long Island medium. That one seems pretty common. A lot of clients I've had have gone to her. Actually, a lot. I have four of them. And they're like, this was a disaster that she makes these vague statements. And I saw one show once. I'm not a TV person or internet person. It's so depressing and the negative energy is so overwhelming. So forgive me for my lack of knowledge with these things, but um, I watched one of these shows with this uh, Teresa something. Mm -hmm. And I saw as these gallery readings, the same thing with, um, who's another one, one of my clients went to, uh, a chip coffee. Um, same thing. They're like, you know, they put out these general things like, oh, I'm getting someone with a J name. Well, yeah, that's the most common letter in American names is J. Of course, you're going to get someone who knows someone with a J name. Mm -hmm. So it's very disappointing to see how they throw these things out and expect you to kind of guess or something. And like, oh, well, you didn't get it. I'm moving on over here. And these people paid outrageous amounts of money for that and it's just so that's what intrigued me so much about the article that i read where you were like hey you know and it, it talks about are you aware of what article i'm talking about yeah new york times new york times yeah yeah it was it was absolutely brilliant and and that's why i didn't i didn't want to come off in the beginning when i first contacted like hey i'm gonna prove you wrong and that's why i said we're on the same side and if i can contribute to your research or contribute to your experience of like, this is something that's more legitimate. This is something that's not legitimate. You know, how can we compare them, you know? And just because it's the way that I work and how I see things, it doesn't mean that if they don't see the same way, it's not legitimate. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know how it works for anybody else. If there is anyone else. Cause I always tell my husband, I it's not fair because having a skip I can't do it for myself and that gets frustrating so it's not like I can say hey should you know we move now <laughs> you know it doesn't work for me mm -hmm. um but you know I did a reading for someone uh, three weeks ago who in fact just sent me a text yesterday because in the reading um I said hey you got a raise coming up soon so that'll be great he sent me a text yesterday goes oh that raise you mentioned it was 30 cents I'm like sorry like I don't see how much it was <laughs> You know, so I really appreciate um, people kind of give me that feedback, you know, and give me that. And most and most don't, but the clients I've had for years usually do. Right. So let me ask you, um, on your website, you do say that you, um, not only do you do mediumship, but you do pet, um, you feel the energy of pets and you can read them as well as people in comas or uh, mm -hmm. autistic people or people even who are pregnant and I'm, I'm curious about all that do would you be able to tell like a, a, a cat energy from a human rat energy or how would you tell the pregnant the embryo is energy from the mother's energy or somebody else who's in the room or I mean how how would you oh, yeah. differentiate between all those so if we look specifically at a pregnant woman and the baby in utero so the energy is different because they're different people. So the mother's energy generally is calmer and they're more inquisitive. It's, it's almost like they're, when you talk to someone that they're really interested, they, their body leans forward, right? Their, their physical body will lean right. forward. Mm -hmm. And so that's the feel that I get from the mother is the, I'm waiting to hear what you're going to say is a calmer energy. The baby's energy is much more active. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and we're talking a healthy baby here, okay? So their energy is much more active. And also, too, what's interesting is that a lot of times they will tell me what they do or do not like. Like, I've had babies in Europe tell me that they don't like the name that they picked up for them. Or they'll say, hey, you know, she's got to stop eating this because it's, you know, hurt my stomach. You know what I mean? Like, they'll tell me, you know, things diet-related or their names, you know, that kind of thing. So the energy is really completely different. Okay, so you would be able to tell like, like a dog energy from a human energy. If usually my pet readings I do in person with the animal mm -hmm. because I'm touching them and you know that kind of thing. Um, but if someone were to ask me like, "Hey, my you know cat's been acting weird," or you know what I mean, because I, I get a lot of those questions too. Mm -hmm. um, if I know what I'm looking for then yes um but on the other hand with that i had this dog um his name was buster great dog had him for 12 years 
and we were very close. And I could, I used to always say, it's like he's a human. He's like a human, you know, mm-hmm. like he understands stuff and he had, you know, these, I mean, dogs in general have human emotions anyway, but I kept saying it's like he's a human. And then um, he was real sick, you know, at the end of his life and finally had to be put um, down, put to sleep. Um, but when I saw him come back, he was a person. He had a human spirit. I was like, oh, you have a human spirit. That's why. And he told me, he said that in his multiple lives, he usually chooses an animal because their life long, their lifespans are not that long. Okay. So if you were to just kind of throw out a name and say, hey, is this, you know, a dog, cat, rock, you know, it would be very difficult for me. Right. To I, just be like, oh, this is this, you know. Yeah, because I was just curious about that. Like, if you were reading for somebody in a coma, how do you know that it's not the doctor who might also be in the room? Well, probably not the doctor, but like the mother or somebody else who's in the room with the coma victim, that you're reading the right person. Or like if a cat was in the sleeping in the room while you were oh, getting yeah, reading to somebody, how do you know? How do you yeah, know? I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's by identifying what's in their energy. So like the person, if I was reading for a person in a coma, and let's say there's five people in the room, the doctor, the nurse, and family members. Yeah. Right? So if I'm in the room, I'm, I have contact with this person. But also, too, their energy, like I said, I'll feel their energy. Like I'll, I'll feel like what they feel. Um, so I know that that's identifying. I mean, also, too, when they talk to me, or I'll see things in their space, in that white space I told you about, mm-hmm. that will be recognizable for them. Okay, yeah. so you would yes. you would be able to tell. I mean, he wouldn't be accidentally yeah. reading the doctor's or something. Right. Or... It, it does happen where someone else's energy can blend in. And I, I had that once I was doing um, a private party, and all these ladies were on the table, and they're all sitting next to each other. I'm reading for this lady, and then all of a sudden I said something. She goes, oh, wait, that's not me. And then the lady looks at her, she goes, that's me. And I said, okay, could you just move down then? <laughs> like, because they were best friends, and they were sitting right next to each other. So, so I had to actually have them move, one move, you know, on the other side of the table. So physical energy, so this energy that you're, so having them in fo- close physical contact, like moving them across the room might, I mean, what if you have the person who moved to the other side of the room, and they have a stronger energy, isn't it going to still feel like they're right next to them, or or maybe blending in again? But well, no, our energy tends to stay near us. Like, we're not separated from our energy. It's almost as if, let's say we're standing in a big egg, and that's our energy. Okay. I mean, it obviously doesn't have a hard shell or, you know, have a border like that, but it, it's, it kind of, it emits from you. It's that space. And it can be, if you think visually, it could be like an aura. You know how people's aura is kind of around them like that? very similar to that concept to the aura how it stays you know emits from you Mm -hmm. the energy is the same way so now when you see these things on television and i always try to make this clear when people who are specifically looking for like mediumship and wondering around wondering about the difference between ghosts and spirits and stuff like that so when you see these things on television these shows where it's the same they'll say oh this ghost keeps doing the same thing over and over again keep walking up and down the stairs over and over and over again right Mm-hmm. What that is, is that's residual energy. Residual energy, how I describe or explain it, is as if a part of a VHS tape is stuck and it kind of keeps going back and moving forward and going back, moving forward. You see that same bit over and over again. So we leave energy on things. Like your, your keys, keys hold tremendous amounts of energy. If I ever have a hard time getting someone's energy, I'll ask if I can hold on their keys. Or glasses or another one. Um, because it's constantly with our energy. Our energy is, you know, we're always using them. It's our energy always touching them. Uh-huh. So we will leave energy on things. I don't know if you've ever bought in something from like a thrift store or something like that. And you're like, wow, this, like, I really like it. You might bring it home. You're like, I'm not sure if I like this. Mm-hmm. You know, you loved it in the store and you got it home and you were alone with the energy. Like it was more prominent than everything else that was in the store. Sometimes it's because there's some residual energy on that. The same thing, anytime there's violence related, energy will stay uh, with that. Okay. 
So um, one of the things that I really wanted to ask is um, do, do, so, you know, you and I would agree that there are people who probably are uh, claiming to be psychic mediums who are, who are probably doing hot readings where they're reading somebody's Facebook page. Like I caught somebody in yeah. the New York Times. Yes. How can you, give me an idea of how somebody may test themselves before or um how the skeptic community which i belong to is able to to test i mean at what point um you know let's, let's say for yourself or maybe the tarot reader you mentioned earlier how can you be sure that you are not um cold reading or you're not um you know just believing that you're doing this when when you you know it, it's so you're saying how do i know if I'm, well I'm how can we test how, do I know it's real? how could somebody test themselves if you had somebody who approached you and said you know i'm starting to feel like i can get i'm getting i'm reading energy i feel like this how can you set that person mm -hmm. down and advise them and say look you may just be hearing your own intuitive thoughts in your head and 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 because you're good at cold reading good at observation lots of feedback how can you know how can you advise that person that to test themselves i mean how can you test someone to be sure that they're either not fraudulently doing it or they're not relying on feedback uh generalities yeah. or hot reading or cold reading yeah that's a very very good question um and I, I don't think that there's a specific answer that will work for everyone, for myself, because you can imagine how long, how many times I've doubted myself. It's <laughs> like, it seems pretty weird. It does. It, even, even though I'm the person doing it, it's like, okay, wait, did I just think that or did somebody say that? And it, it's, it's, it makes you question yourself sometimes right. and what has given me more confidence and what has helped me understand things is so when people do give me feedback and they say oh yeah you know this happened and you know you said this and and that so that, that could be feedback but what I do then is I think about what I felt at that moment I said that and mm -hmm. that's why it's important like I said to be honest because it allows your energy to be, to be open um, but at the same time too um, if, if I'm wrong then say okay it doesn't really resonate with me let's move on you know what i mean because mm -hmm. and so for me it's getting that validation um and that yeah this this happened and so what i do then is i think about what i was feeling at the moment i said that you know like okay i heard this this way or this i could see you know like i see these images and so i'm like okay so then i'm able to connect you know kind of sew things together if you will and say okay i felt this here so that means this like um this is so they give you symbols just if i can go off on a little tangent here if this maybe sure well. go ahead but i see symbols and sometimes i'll get new symbols but there was one i had recently it was a new symbol for me um i had a woman she called and she it was her first reading mm -hmm. first reading ever she had never even had a reading but this was her first reading and I told her, I said, your father's coming through. I'm seeing a father figure coming through for you. And I said, he's connected with the ocean. She's like, oh, no, I come with my father. Then she goes, because he didn't even do the ocean. And then he showed me walking out of the ocean onto the land. And I said, oh, I said, he's showing me he's walking out of the ocean onto land. That tells me he's not from here. He came across the ocean to be here. And she's, oh, yeah, he's from Malta. And so that's a symbol you know like if they're walking out of the ocean to land that means they're not from here that they came from another country and across the ocean to be here and so that's why i have to ask like i'm seeing this you know mm -hmm. and so i'll get different same thing if i see a crab in someone's energy it it's one of two things either they have crab-like tendencies meaning that they're all tough and strong but they get their hurt their feelings hurt they go and hide you know what i mean like or they're a cancer that's the only two things that a crab will mean for me. So a lot of times I'll see these sort of symbols for things. Right. Okay. So, yeah. So talking to someone else, I would tell them that they need to test this stuff out. They need to test. And by doing that, I would say, okay, um, 
think about going to the supermarket. You're going to go to the supermarket. I want you to think ahead. What will I see there? Just something. It doesn't matter what it is. Will I see um, a little girl in a pink dress? You know, or something. And then you go to that store. You know, and that's just a way to kind of look hard for something. You know what I mean? If, if you're getting that feeling, and go see. So to tr try it and test it out right away. Because when we do readings, and whether it's, um, you know, tarot card or what well, tarot cards, you know, I, I have a deck, but I always try to steer people away from them because I, I don't think they're very informative at all. And to me, I think they're kind of a waste of time. But to someone at least they're doing a cold reading or whatever, is find something identifiable, something that you can find out, something mm -hmm. that the person can validate. Yes, this is true. Yes, this is, you know, consistent. But Readings don't always work, or I'm sorry, no, sorry aren't, aren't only, don't only work with people, you know, so, and so I try to, we try to encourage them to, you know, try to do a reading on something that wasn't a person that they could find out. Well, so readings. like a fact, I mean, that that's kind of what I'm getting at is how would you test, how would you test someone with something that's factual, like something that is known? Um, like reading somebody who doesn't exist, but saying they do, thinking they are there, or how would you, well, let me ask you this question. What would it take, you said you've even challenged yourself at times, what would it take for you not to get to a point where you think that you probably don't have this ability? Is there anything that that would probably do that to you? Um, there isn't anything that would convince me that I didn't, just because I've, my first remembrance of of doing this was when I was age three when my little sister died so I've been doing it all this time but over the years especially young part of me was like am I imagining this does this and so I would do tests to myself you know what I mean like oh okay I like one time I was walking into a department store and I, was, I had to park kind of far away and I'm like okay so there's gonna be a red car that's gonna drive in front of the building right when I get there and so I walk into the parking lot no cars I mean there's no cars driving around or anything and I was like okay so maybe I was wrong. And just as I start to cross, this red car kind of comes out of nowhere. And I'm like, wow, that could have slowed down a little bit. You know, so it's was those kinds of things like I'm checking, like, am I ma making this up? Am I imagining it? Well, um, in, it's in, this, odd thing. in the skeptic mm -hmm. world, in the world that I've been involved with for a long time, and I mean, I don't want to invalidate your experiences. Uh, what I, what we would say if somebody was to tell me that story is that, well, for number one, we remember our hits, we forget the misses. So if the red car had not shown up, then we would have said to ourselves, oh, well, another time, or we would have forgotten about it. And then later we might have seen a red car. Or maybe the first thing that entered my head was a blue car, but then I changed it to red car uh, just really quickly. And then I saw a blue car because I thought I, you know, that was really my first instinct. And we, we, we make, we make, um, adjustments in our mind yeah. uh, because we want badly to confirm especially if you've done it for a very long time you don't want to say to yourself well you mean I've been lying to myself all these years you know I mean that would be really stupid who's going to do that but to be able to be you know in my mind I would love to believe in psychics I absolutely would adore it but um, I still I need something more than just you know that I have a garden I I need and I, yeah, it would be, yeah, that's why and if I'm not, friend could, if you could get someone else to do a reading and that's why, because you had so much experience and kind of what you do in the group and stuff like that, that's why I was like, I wanted to read the other person first because I don't think they'd have a lot of expectation of like, this is what I'm looking for. This is not what I'm looking for. You know what I mean? Like someone who would just be open and do an actual like full on reading where you could observe and like, okay, she's saying this. And then you're able to watch the person's face in front of you, you know, and be like, okay, is it resonating with them? Is it not? You know what I mean? Well, what about and like I, having some, something set up like, or not even set up, but Okay, so I'm watching somebody's face and you're talking about gardens, you're talking about eggs, you're talking about other things, father issues or whatever. Those are kind of vague things. How, how, I mean, wouldn't you be able to tell something that's, that's gravity, something that we know, something that's like, does a father, you know, yeah, so I mean, there are times when I'll do racing and I'll actually feel 
what the person felt when they passed or when they died. Right. Um, and those are physical things. And then the people will say, hey, yeah, that they died from this. But it all depends on what they show me. And that's why I like to emphasize I'm reading energy here. These are these are things that are in your energy. These are experiences mm-hmm. um, that you have. And so to put on like, okay, we want to do a test. You know, there was someone showed me a long time. There's a guy who is, I think is a well known, I don't remember his name, but he's a fraud who goes around pretending to expose frauds. You know what I mean? Like one of those. And he, his way of doing a test to see if someone had a psychic ability is he had like 20 envelopes lined up on a table mm-hmm. and they all had photographs in. And he's like, there's one dead person's photograph and else is live. And he told the guy, with, he's like, now find the dead person's photograph. And I'm dying when I watch this because that's not how the ability works. You know, you're not going to get energy from 20 envelopes on a table. You know, I mean, that's... Crazy. Are you talking about sure. James Randi? What is it? James Randi? Is he the old guy that with the suicide attempt? Is that the one? Suicide He's attempt? old and has a beard. Yeah, he is because a, f- a friend of mine showed me this, sent me this link, I think it was on YouTube, about the envelope test. And then he did a TED Talks where he, like, balanced an entire bottle of sleepy pills in front of the entire... Oh, party. yeah, yeah, that was James Randi. Okay, and I'm like, how is no one not calling 911? Because he's clearly suicidal. No, he's taking but, homeopathy. Yeah, just crazy stuff. But homeopathy so, is just water, so he hmm. he wasn't going to kill himself because he took a whole bottle. I've done it. It's it's. Oh, so so it was water that he was taking. No, okay. no, you're taking homeopathy, which is water, sugar pills. So if he's taking homeopathy, it's like taking nothing. I mean, I've I've oh, done so it lots of sugar pills. Yeah, that yeah, wasn't so, a real suicide. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so he made out to be something different, but at any rate, that makes more sense than if he's just taking. Steroids. Yeah, it's just homeopathy. So let me, so let me just clear that up because you don't do a lot of like internet stuff. But James Randi and a lot of other places who test. I know you, uh, your email was accidentally forwarded to the Center for Inquiries um, in, uh, investigation group first, and I know they apologized and said, "So sorry, Susan, the email was supposed to go to you, and then it went to us. We thought that." Ray was going to try to do a psychic challenge. And um, when, when, they, when somebody does say that they want to be tested for the paranormal challenges, and there's groups all over the world that do this in Australia and um, is not only in the United States, the, the group I mentioned has a $250,000, quarter million dollar challenge. Um, what they do is they, they write a protocol with the person who's, who's making the claim. So they would say, to you, they would say, just for example, Ray, they would say, Ray, what can you do that can be tested that we can test? And you, and in the case of the, the envelopes, the person said, I can tell a photograph from a photograph if a person was alive or dead. And they say, with what, um, with what percentage can you tell? I mean, how many, uh, how many, if we gave you 10 photographs, would you be able to tell all 10 if they're alive or dead? And the person will, you know, say, yes, I can do 10. And they'll say, and what barriers would you have? I mean, if the photograph was um, in an envelope, such as this manila envelope, would you still be able to read the person if they're dead or alive from the photograph? Oh, so you're saying that was what they said they could do. Right. So when you okay. see these Did tests, I clearly missed that part. Right. I just saw the part with the it wouldn't, it probably wouldn't have worked for you because that's not yeah, how no. you do stuff, but so what they do is they've set, when they set up these protocols, they say, what can you do? And it's all signed off and agreed on it way in advance. They say, okay, so, uh, you know, they'll ask them beforehand, are you feeling confident? Are you feeling this? Sometimes we've set up tests where people have, you know, the picture has to be black and white. The picture cannot have a person with a beard. The person has to be male. Um, you know, we've done other kinds of tests like that where the person says, I can with 100% confidence or 95% confidence, I can look at a photograph or they can look at it or they can feel it through touch through a, a manila envelope. So they're all really carefully designed to, to be um, with what the person claims that they can do. Because in the skeptic community, we're really trying to, we have to find a way of testing. We can't, we can't just take somebody's word on it. We have to say, what is it you can do with what reliability and what 
how can we ensure that this isn't just chance? How can we sh ensure right. that this is um, with within your within your stated abilities? Like a person says they can use a, a sticks and they can walk towards water that's hidden underneath something. Okay, well that's called dousing, right? So if you can do that, you know we know that um, people give cues and feedback. So if we put the water under a, uh, uh, if you know the water's there, then you're gonna find the water. But if you have 10 waters and they're all covered up so you can't see, how, how accurate are you gonna be to find that one that has water? And then we'll test it beforehand to say, okay, can you find the water when you know that the water is there? We'll say, here's the water, do you feel it? And they're like, yes, I feel the water. Okay, are you comfortable going forward with this test? And they say, yes. So, I mean, in your case, if you're not interested in, in, in you, you said you don't want notoriety, you're comfortable with your life, you're happy. So, I mean, it's just, to me, I find this all very fascinating how, how a psychic medium such as yourself, who says you're skeptic, how you, how you get there and how you said that you don't think there's anything that, that could be said to you or, or to show that you're so, not accurate or that you're, this is a yeah, real. So if you were to say, Hey, you know, since I let her, Ray, I'm sorry. I'm clearly screwing that up. Um, if you said to me, like, you know, what can we do for, if I were to say, if you want to test, um, or see, you know, how a gym is, what I would say for myself, because again, okay. things work differently for people and I certainly cannot judge what someone else may or may not be able to do. Mm -hmm. But for me, if you said, hey, sit at this table, we're going to bring in 10 strangers and want you to do readings on all of them and we'll see if you're accurate on all 10 of them. And they would, they would, so they would need to be in person readings. Um, no, they wouldn't have to be in person. I'm just saying that because I deal with energy, to say here, you know, 10 boxes, which one holds a diamond, I won't be able to do that. Okay. Because I, I, I don't, That's fair. I, I don't see physical stuff. I solely go through energy. How about like, you said that you could feel keys hold a lot of energy. So if you were to take maybe, I'm just throwing this out there. Like if you took 10 sets of keys and we had, in a, and you were to pick them up one at a time, could you take that set of keys and say this keys belong to this person this set of keys belong to that person maybe the person would be no i wouldn't be able to because no. i would have to feel the person's energy and the energy on the keys i couldn't just pick up the keys and hand them to the right person i would have to feel their energy and see where the energy matches oh but if there was 10 people and you could like go up to them and whatever it is you need to yeah. do to feel their energy and then you also had a box with, or a table with 10 sets of keys on them. Could you yeah. go up and like feel that person's energy, like stand in front of them and feel energy on them and then go to all 10 and then go over to the table and then feel the energy on the keys. And you could, you could even have in the protocol that maybe they had to carry the keys with them for an hour before or something. So they really have yeah, a strong, interesting. and could you, could you match their keys to the human being? Mm. And, and there would have to be some like kind of code on the keys so that, you know, we weren't fooling around or, you know, trying yeah. to trick you or anything like that. But it would, cause that seems like that's a testable claim because the that odds would be not only one in 10, um, it would be, 10 out of 10, what is that, a thousand? I, I don't know, somebody would have to do the odds for me. But yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's a test, and I know there are organizations who will do this, and I mean, if you don't want the fame, that's fine, you can remain anonymous, and if you don't want the money, that's fine, you can give the money to a charity, but there are legitimate groups out there who really, that's how they would do it. They would, they would facilitate yeah, it in that way. I've never done that before. I've never done, you know, like that kind of a, a setup. Um, right. But like I said, I've done readings where, you know, if I was at an event and did 20 readings in a day and they're all accurate, you know, that's because I'm dealing directly right. with their energy. But to deal with uh, an inanimate object like that, Ooh. because it is harder to read energy on an object uh -huh. because it, it, does, it isn't um, movable energy. And that's why I'll use that as a backup. If I'm having a hard time. Say, say someone will come to me and say, hey, you know, my child is really struggling and I don't know how to help them, that kind of thing. And if I can't get into their energy because their child's trying to hide something or whatever, then I'll say, okay, you know, let me see if I can 
get into our energy through this. Right. But I've never like tried to, you know, match an energy. That well, that's, that's, that's the, how we would think in the skeptic community, because giving readings to someone and feeling like you're getting validation from them, that's, that's an old, I mean, we could, we could go on that all day long because again, it's a matter of opinion to the person who's being read. And then there's the vagueness of a lot of readings and on and on and on. We would say, that's nice, but what can yeah. you do that we can, we can validate and we can, um, how do I say it? where where there's strict protocols like i said you would determine what you want you would say okay uh i'm just using keys again i mean it could be something else uh -huh. sure. um it, it could be like um they have to hold the keys on them for an hour or maybe a day maybe it's a bracelet maybe they have to put bring a ring or uh -huh. a bracelet that they have to wear for 24 hours a day uh for for a week and then when they get to this testing, you know, testing protocol kind of thing, you could say, I need to actually be within their, like independently with the person for five minutes just to feel their energy, just them and I yeah. sitting across from each other, maybe holding their hands or you get to decide as long as the skeptics um, have that kind of in writing and say, this is what Ray says she can do. She says, if we, if the person holds the bracelet for an, for 24 hours uh, on their wrist and then they sit down and they hold the person's hand for five minutes she feels with 80 percent confidence that she will be able to match the bracelet that's now sitting on the table with the person that wore it for a full day and that is where we get into um something where we feel like there's something there because just giving a reading to somebody is you know i could do that i mean i see what you're saying yeah, because so there's a lot of generalities it's it's just it's all over the place and it just sounds like cold reading to be honest with you and it, and cold reading is that's that's we've been doing that for years i i know all about cold reading and that's yeah it's, it's too bad that your friend couldn't come i mean if you have someone else that could i but you again, know, it would be it would be the same kind of the thing, same thing sure. right i would um, i would look at my friend's face and i could watch my friend nod yes or no but it, it it i could ask her at the end i could say hey how was that and she goes well some things were right and some things were wrong but again that doesn't give us sure. any anywhere to go yeah, from that everyone wants to understand what's happening right and we're time. humans we like to connect so, to each other we're, we don't want to make people feel bad and say well you yeah. got it wrong but you know you want to if i look at the key scenario mm -hmm. um would i so if if we were just hanging out and we're like hey could this be done you know can you do this sure um, what I would just consider is, let's say we have five sets of keys. What I would do is I would do a little mini reading on each set and write down the details. You know, what I feel from the energy of the person. That's that. an idea. Could you tell, like, if it was um, a male who owned it or a female who owned it? Or I maybe... Mean, possibly. I mean, I don't... Well, do try it. You know, like that, so Ray, I, I think you should try it. Purposes, but... I think you should try it. Try figuring out what it is that maybe you can do using inanimate objects maybe like i said a bracelet or a, a ring uh sotometry i can't think what it's called all of a sudden at the top of my head but there if you feel like you get a boost of helps connect even more with the energy mm -hmm. then it seems like that would be testable and and if so i mean you know you could be the person who who sets physics on its head and and says look you can talk to the dead look you can do this this is amazing and then we would alert cnn and we'd win the nobel prize for physics and it would be amazing and the accolades that come in and the group that tested you would be just like that would be trust me they want you to succeed maybe more than you do because I mean, to, for us to, to prove the psychic I'm ability very, hmm? i'm very protective i have no family well you could do no this life. But I'm and saying my husband doesn't either. It's literally just me and my husband, our two kids. We have absolutely no relatives and we live on the opposite side of the country. We have no friends here. And so the prospect of people wanting to ask questions and interview me and hail us to this in the media is it can be done anonymously, trust me. Yeah. It okay. would be done anon you can set up the protocol any way you want. But I I suggest kindly that you test yourself and figure out what it is that would uh, what you think you could do under testable circumstances and 
I would also kindly suggest what it is that would convince you that you are not on this track. What could be done or what could be, what could be proven to you? And until you've gotten to that part in your, in your life, then I don't think you're at the far end of, of, of your ability because um, lots of people are intuitive. Lots of people are really good at, at relating to people. You are obviously a very personable, very, um, I feel a lot of uh, love and, and kindness and wanting to help people. And I, I bet your clients love being around you and love actually connecting to you. You, you're, you have a lot of that um, I don't want to say energy. <laughs> you have that. You can tell you, you relate, you good listener. Um, and, and at a, empathy. empathy. Yeah. And intuitiveness. And at a certain point I would have to say, that's just you being a good human. And how do we get from Ray being a really good human, a good listener and, and get you to the point of that this is a thing or just you're a great counselor and you're probably really good at giving advice and really good at listening to people and telling them, you know, that guy you're with, he's probably not the best thing for you, you know, and, and you know, like a, like a wise aunt or a, a grandmother would be. I, I, like your very specific information to people in readings, mm -hmm. you know, so like, like, like I mentioned, the, someone I give a reading to, recently a, a you know a month ago or whatever about his race coming and you know he sent me a text yesterday so there are things that you're very specific information mm -hmm. on um and those are the things that really same thing one thing that is is very common for people when as they're wanting to connect with someone who's passed i tell them exactly what the person was feeling as they passed like one time i was reading for someone and he asked like you know is it possible to connect to my dad and then, you know, he said his name and, you know, I was able to get the energy and he kept showing me, he's like, I can't pick my legs. I can't pick my legs. And then I felt a lot of pressure on my abdomen, a lot of pressure on my chest. And I don't know what that meant. I said, I don't know what this means, but this is what I'm feeling. He goes, yeah, he goes, he drowned. And because of the clothes he was wearing, he couldn't move because he's wearing this heavy thing. Cause he wasn't, he wasn't supposed to be swimming. He had fell off, fell off the boat. So it's those kind of specific things that are like, okay. You know, that's, those are the things that like, yes, this is, you know, what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling and hearing, these are the things that are accurate. Right. But I, Ray, I would not call it specific, to be honest with you. That would be not specific because when you're dying, well, first off, we don't know exactly what they're experiencing because they're dying. But as you die, you're going to experience lots of different things, sensations of your, maybe your heart rate elevates, or maybe your breathing slows down, or maybe your there's just so much well, going on in the death part. And I felt an impact to the chest and there were shots in the chest. Okay, well, there could so be a mean, shot. That could be that could be a heart attack. That could be, you an know. An impact to the chest? Well, a chest, an impact could be a gunshot or as well it could be yeah, a stroke or a heart attack. And one of the most no, common diseases. You feel it much, much more different. It, it does not feel the same. If you said there was a shot to your, if there was a no, sudden pain, impact, pain, impact mm -hmm. to your chest, uh, I, I've never had a stroke. I've never had a heart attack, but I would yeah. assume that it would be a yeah, sharp right. pain to the to the chest. Um, kind of. Um, when I'm feeling someone, like if they have heart trouble, stuff like that, I'll actually feel it in the left shoulder on the arm and the, the left side of the chest. But more so, it feels very painful on the shoulder and the arm. So it's, it's a little bit different, but but anyway, I, I see what you're saying as far as the you know try to test like physical. If you could find things. something, that would be really interesting. I, I I would be fascinated to see if you came up with something and um, were able I to. I like the tea idea. I think well, that that's something whatever's comfortable to you. You could even have, like I said, a bracelet so that there was no way of telling that the keys, you know, maybe look more masculine because they're, you know, I don't know, somebody's key ring might have a playboy bunny thing on it or something and it kind of makes you feel like it goes to this guy over here who looks kind of you know well, that's what i'm saying i would i think i would if i were to do something like that or maybe to even test you know because mm -hmm. i'm interested in that see if that's something that would be um a challenge to do but what that's i would an idea. personally is i would do a reading on each of the set of the keys first i'd have a little piece of paper okay. this is what i'm getting from these keys this is what i'm getting from these keys 
and that, then that's fair. You know, interact with the people's inter uh, and, energy. Yeah, that would, would be fair. Would keys first, like a little reading. That would be fair, and then you would be able to. The whole test would be whatever you feel comfortable with, but matching it up with whoever it is who owns these keys. And of course, there'd have we'd have to make sure that, like I said, there was a number or something some kind of tag on the keys because you don't want the person to say no those aren't my keys when actually they were their keys because we would have to be fair to you so it'd have to be some way of matching you know i mean you could always take a quick photo of the person with their keys that, just hold them up okay, very these good are my keys, you mm -hmm. know yeah you and bet you have someone you can match it later yeah yeah and and again this is all for you know the idea even if you don't ever want to come forward with your name or anything like that this is still fascinating for research and and if right. uh you know if we had more people who were willing to to go this far and, and and as you're doing, you know, very open with your ideas and very willing to to understand and listen to what what I'm saying, that um, you know, just based on the years of I've been doing this, but this would be fascinating for the world of the skeptic community to be able to maybe go beyond that. Um, but you know obviously there's a yeah. lot of misunderstandings because i mean just the james randy uh homeopathy uh challenge that he this the suicide challenge he's doing that i mean that's just it's just like he's taking candy you know <laughs> it's yeah. you know in my world we're like no of course he's not committing suicide in your world you're going that guy's committing suicide it's a misunderstanding yeah now that you say well, he was just taking sugar pills yeah he was just that taking sugar sense. pills yeah but Ray, I, I really appreciate you talking to me today. This has been very interesting. Give me, you know, think about what you what I said, and let's, and you know, be in touch. Yeah, I, I definitely am interested in this key concept of of that. That would be very interesting to do. So I'm gonna, like I said, we're not from here, and I don't know too many people here. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna see if I can, you know, see if I can find someone who can help me with that, or just say, hey, you know, let's. Because I don't, I don't, I don't know five people here, so I come to like, hey, you're <laughs> your keys. Yeah, I do. I hear yeah. your accent. I can tell you're not from Oregon. <laughs> yeah, I can um, definitely tell. I've had to pull it in quite a bit because my, I have two small children, and they started talking with a, a Brooklyn accent. And I love like, it. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Sure, you know, yeah, I have. Clearly. I have a, I have an accent too, even though I've never lived anywhere near where. Uh, my accents from because I picked it up from from family members but uh, yeah people and that's a cold reading tactic somebody might hear my my accent and be familiar with it and go oh so you're from the south you know <laughs> and you're like no I am not from the south but my mom was so that's definitely where you're getting that that from but it's a cold reading thing they might say oh you're not from the south but your mom must have been you know you know it's just cold reading but Ray, he looks like Rudy Giuliani. Uh -huh. He's he's first born Italian, but he has an Irish accent because he grew up in Irish neighborhoods. Okay. And most people out of New York don't know that just because you know, you know, Rudy Giuliani is from there and stuff. But it's that's just a, what, like you said, you have a southern accent, you're, you're not from the south. But he's has an Irish accent, and he's definitely not Irish. Right. All right. Well, Ray, I I really look forward to hearing from you again. Thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. Bye-bye now. Okay. And we're, and we're done with that. So you guys, I have got to pee really bad. Sorry. I'm going to pause this recording. So I can go pee and then let's talk. Okay. So go get yourself something to drink or whatever. I'm sorry. This is taking forever. I'm going to pause this long enough, but I'm going to keep the live feed open. I'll be right back. Okay. So, um, I'd like to talk about it maybe for 10, 15 minutes. If anybody wants to come into the Zoom room because they want to say something, that's fine. But you have to be aware that I am recording this and it will go up on our YouTube channel. And I want you to be nice. Uh, let me get the Zoom link. And my stomach's starting to growl, so I we won't go on long, <laughs> even though that was interesting. So... Here's the link to if you want to come into Zoom and talk about what just happened. Um, I made some notes. And thank you guys for staying with me. That was a long event. I thought she was going to read for about 30 minutes. And uh, then the originally I was going to say she, you know, she was going to read my friend. And then I took my friend out. And uh, here comes we have we have Sweden showing up first. And uh, 
Hey, Pontus from the ESP, the real ESP. Yeah, hello. Hey, son, hey, son. He was there the whole time. I think if anybody else wants to join, that's fine too. Let me turn up the volume. So um, let's see if a couple more people joined. That was. But, but this, was, this was really, really interesting. And I know I, I put some. There's a lot of great comments in there, and I could not follow everything because. No, no. I, I, I know I was mocking this person. <laughs> quite a while, uh, quite a lot, but I, I do think that she is uh, a good-hearted person. Deep. She's just very misguided and she's trying to do something good. And uh, I, uh, well, I, I, I respect what she did and she did, uh, well, there was a lot of things, of course, that we can, as skeptics, will see through as uh, just cold reading and stuff but i think she was very sincere boy she was very sincere and this is why i didn't want to trick and trick her mm. and i was going to um i had it all set up so that i was going to have somebody else be read that was obviously not for her to read i was going to have her read my cat to be honest with you mm. but since she couldn't see what was going on she'd be reading my cat and that would have been a, a giveaway, but I wanted to see how she went. She didn't want to be tricked. She didn't want to have anything happen to her that was, um, uh, <laughs> so you guys are all live on Facebook, by the way, and as well as being recorded for, for this go YouTube channel. If anybody ever gets through all three hours, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, what'd you guys all think? There's, I've got five of you here. Four of it. Great. You really liked great. it. Huh? You were great, Susan. Oh, well, thank you. I didn't have you here to tell me I'm great. I just want to hear some. <laughs> you have diplomacy skills, Susan. Maybe I should get into get into the government, huh? Well, I felt <laughs> I felt with this woman that she was really a sincere believer and diplomacy skills, Susan. Oh, yeah, stop, uh, Robin, or whoever's got their audio. Well, I, well, I felt with this woman with your... that she was really. I guess that you, Wendy. A sincere believer. Here, I'll mute Wendy for the moment. Um, yeah, you got to turn it off when you're on the live thing because otherwise you're just going to hit reverb. Thank you. <laughs> you were awesome. You were completely terrific. You were so calm. And you were not intimidating to her. She whatever she wanted. And I know that you, that, I mean, like it, it was happening to us where we could hear all the holes and all of her claims. And you didn't, you were calm, you did not react, you didn't give her any feedback. Yeah, she was, she was on the phone. She couldn't see anything. I was trying, I felt really awful by doing a live feed. You guys are just watching me. I was trying to use facial expressions and things because just because it's got to be boring. And then I was goofing around a little bit and, and then Richard Saunders says, you probably shouldn't goof around. I'm like, yeah, you're probably right, I shouldn't. But I just, you know, an hour and a half of this, somebody just, but you weren't even saying yes or no. You were just going, okay, okay. And, the, and that was, that, that, that foiled whatever cold reading she might have been able to do just from a phone conversation. I don't know if I could have done it. Oh, yeah. You'd be a good lawyer, Susan, because lawyers love to control the conversation <laughs> and sort of let you talk yourself into a, your own grave, <laughs> you know. Uh, you'd be great at taking depositions. <laughs> Susan, do you think that um, being able to act out a little bit for the camera um, to make it less boring for us made it easier for you to keep your reactions out of your voice? Because you did a great job of that. You think so? I don't. He's right. I don't think so. I think I probably overemphasized. Here comes Richard Saunders. I think I, I think I gave away a lot more knowing that you guys were watching and I could see, I felt like my friends are here hanging out with me. So I, if I had just done that on the phone with somebody, I, I think I'd be even more like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't. Well, think, you were great either way. Well, thanks. I, it just, it doesn't feel like I did really anything because I was just listening to a person tell me these things that they were overwhelmingly wrong over and over and over and over. Right, and you and didn't over. react at all, which is I know, the whole thing about do. your relationships with your grandfathers, 
I've never met a single grandparent. They've all been dead before I was born. And they, I mean, the, I was trying not to say, do you, I was saying, do you know of any memories of, they want to share with me? Not like memories we had together. I know Kevin was saying in the, in the, in the comments, he's like, say, say something about you guys having a relationship or something like that. I'm thinking, no, that would be a lie. I was just trying to say, what can you tell me about my grandfather, which I would adore to hear about my grandparents. Oh my gosh. I've never had a grandparent that I've known. I have a step grandmother that I sort of knew, but my grandfather died in 1930, 1936. I, they're right. 1938, 39, 1939. The other one died in 1951. Uh, another one died in 61. Another one died in 22. I was born in 62 and there was no, she had nothing right. The only thing she said that there's a cat yeah. in my life. Yeah. <laughs> it's like how I have a cat. That is. <laughs> and um, she had this thing about a cat and tea. And there was a, that's why I said it was a, could have easily been a hot read because there's a picture or a video that I just recently did uh, with, I think it was with Janice. I was, I had a cup of tea and it had all these cats across it. And I said, oh, uh, you go, I said, Janice, you go ahead and tell us about facilitated communication while I finish drinking this cup of tea in this cup that Paula gave me and it had cats around it. And that, was that when you said you you had a sign saying hot reading? Was that? Yeah, I said that was that was a very recent. That was hot reading. Thing. Yeah, okay. that was a very, very recent thing she could have found, like, you know, yeah. my Facebook feed a few minutes. Yeah. it wasn't that. It, big it would be though. easy to jump to that conclusion. Uh, it sometimes you just have to think, well, maybe or maybe it was just one of these random things she threw out that you. And could I'm find making the connection. Through. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm uh, cat, cats are very common. In most people's yeah, and so is gardening. Oh yeah, and gardening. That and gardening. right on that. I have flowers and cat. Hey, There's skeptical cat. cats. Right. right there you go. So she's super into cooking. Is that more? Oh, that was or? hilarious. That I could see you guys all giggling when it got to the cooking. I hate but, cooking. And Henrietta. <laughs> oh, sorry. I had 50-50 chance. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> all I just said, all I just said on Facebook, have you warned Mark that you're destined to leave him for a golfer with light but not blonde hair? <laughs> who has a boat <laughs> who's been in the United Emirates and the Caribbean and who's sort of working for a company but's not, and I'll meet him by the end of the year and something to do with Alex. Yeah, and the ocean. And, oh, in the ocean. And and I thought, is she referring to one of these scams, you know, these sweetheart scams or oh. I, no, my, poor making, kids, making, my poor kids don't know that I'm going to have news of being a grandmother in the end of the year. <laughs> but I think we, we, could all, we could all tell as the reading went along that what she was doing was just pausing so you could then fill in lots of gaps for her and then continue down uh, a wonderful reading. And that's what she would get probably every time she does readings for people. Because in a normal conversation, regardless, when you pause for a, a reply from the person you're talking to, they'll you know, you carry on the conversation. Right, so because silence is so awkward and you want to fill in. Yeah. Yeah. No, Celestia. Hey, Celestia. Celestia. Hi. That's strange. So did she know beforehand, Susan, that you were not going to be reactive or did that come <clears> surprise <throat> to her? No, she didn't. She told me that, I said, let's do it over Zoom and then we'll broadcast it live on Facebook. That's what I told her. And she says, no, I don't do Facebook and I don't know what Zoom is. And then I said, um, because if, if so, then she would have gotten feedback from me. Cause of course I'd be having a nod or something, you know, but over the phone, she says, it's going to be over the phone. And I told her, I said, I'm fine with that as long as I can record. And as you heard at the very beginning, she goes, did you already hit record? And I wanted to make sure that was on the video that she said it was okay to record. She yeah. didn't know it was live, but you know, I don't think that's a big deal, but I mean, cause she couldn't see, and I didn't give her her name, give her name or website at all anyway. So, um, yeah, we have no idea who she yeah, is. Yeah. You don't, and you wouldn't know who she is. She's, she's got a website, but I've never heard of her. And it, it was not somebody that we would know. She, she, you know, I was going to ask her Robin if she expected feedback from me, but she didn't, 
I don't see how she would have gotten feedback from me on a phone call unless she, she did ask me a few times what questions, because I told her at the beginning, I have some questions for you. But the questions I had were like, you know, what, what about energy? How would you test yourself? How do you know when you're, how would you, what would it take for you not to believe? Those are the questions I had for her. Not, how would she tell a cat from a dog or a cat from a human? And I didn't have any questions about my family. So she did pause several times and say, so what questions do you have for me? And I thought, oh, well, I'd like to know about my love life. You know, I just, I don't know. I just threw that out there. Or how about my grand, I would really love to hear from my grandfather. And I thought, she, oh, this would be great. She's interesting because that character, what she represents, is repeated all around the world. I've met her many, many times in Australia under different faces and names and everything. But it's essentially the same sort of person who doesn't know what energy means. Who's been completely... That was fascinating. Celestia has a question or a comment or, or she wants to... She's just got having a problem with her finger right her now. finger in there. <laughs> You, you, I wasn't going to join the Zoom, but you guys pulled me away from making a cherry pie. So I, oh, I, cherry I did, pie! I, I, Can I we had, have some? I had a whole oh, bunch of fresh cherries. Do you have enough for everybody? While I was pitting the cherries, I was listening to you. Oh, okay. Um, Were you watching so, too? Uh, yeah, I was watching earlier, and it, it occurs to me, and I'm, I'm going to throw out some an, an offer of free labor here. As long uh, as you don't throw up, that's fine. <laughs> No, this. Uh, there were so many moments where I just saw the flow chart, a cartoon flow chart, if you will, just <laughs> expand as, you know, because later on you were like, well, what's your confidence level? And she's like, well, there are certain things I'm not really confident on, like your, your grandfather having a dog. And she was confident at the time. She was like, I'm seeing a dog with him, like a big dog. It's like a black lab. It's like the size of it. She, she had details and she seemed confident, but then you were like, no, no, I didn't have a dog. You did give some feedback. You did in your voice, in your tone. There was absolutely markers that that you kind of feel sorry for her, and you kind of have to do something. You know, that's what Pontus was saying. I think earlier yeah. in the chat because I, yeah, I would but, break down and probably give her some information or something just out of pity. But she had so many little choices, little flow chart choices that she made. Uh, if you want to write this up, I, I know you're doing this whole thing as a recording. But if you want to write something up for SI or, or anywhere, really, uh, I could, especially with the way that you can publish online where it's an endless just down, down, down column, mm -hmm. you can do a column that's like 10 feet long, I could do a series of illustrations that make it like a flow chart for Ooh. what happens with the psychic. Ooh, oh, I'd I, like that. How about do you, like just, do you have a cat? I'm sensing a cat near you. Does could, your, maybe you we take like five minutes. Cat? How about like five minutes of the reading? Because I can't imagine somebody wanting to go through the whole thing. But. Uh, either either five or ten minutes of it, or or even just the main the main ideas of it. I mean, I would have to watch the whole thing again uh, and and make a series of notes. That would be interesting. I would love that. But then, but it would allow it would allow somebody, I'd love that. One of the problems with people getting to this stuff, you even saw this with her. She's like, oh, that guy who tried to commit suicide on the TED Talk and blah blah blah. She's not absorbing. She's not. She's not. She's just getting the bare surface minimum of skeptical research about her own field. Mm -hmm. So if we could present something quick and easy, like a cartoon flow chart, you can literally see the boxes as it goes down. It would make it easy for people to read if they want to see. This is a typical psychic reading, and this is. Yeah, I, I thought with, that with, was typical. It didn't it? Did feel typical? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, with, with the uh, along the way as the reading went further and further, you could see her starting to blame Susan more and more. Oh, yeah. I didn't feel that at all. Somebody. I didn't she feel it at all, to. but I saw you guys writing that in the comments of the Facebook yeah. page, and I oh, and did. I kept thinking she's blaming me. I didn't even notice it. Well, it was it, wasn't. it was very subtle. Very but subtle. She was yeah. definitely like how? give a give an example. Your hmm. energy isn't open. Something like that. We'd have to go back and listen to it and reread yeah. it or, or whatever. But as but it has she has to do it because this is the first probably the first time this has ever happened to her. Where she's been and, challenged. You know, to I've been I've seen this so many times and this is what we all do. Our brain will look for a reason. Yeah. She, so she probably knows it works. When it's not working, oh, it's because Susan's being the problem yeah. here, not me. And it it was actually, to be honest, it was Susan being the problem because I know <laughs> you had to really fight. Even you no, know, even if you know what you know, you had to struggle not to confirm what she was saying yeah. because that's our instinct. We want. I, to I didn't. That. I didn't feel like it. I just felt like, okay. Well, like, yeah. 
I didn't want to feel like I was struggling with it. If she had to be in person, it'd be harder. Susan, have you ever seen someone? Have you ever seen someone be cold readed? Oh yeah, of course. And you you give feedback, right? If just nodding your head or smiling or well, and usually it's much more obvious feedback when they get something wrong. The person being read goes, "Oh no, 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 that's wrong." And exactly. or when it's right, they go, "Oh, that's amazing!" Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, none of that. that. In, in it hits um, the Wizard this. of Oz, when Dorothy goes to see Professor Marvel and he looks in his uh, crystal ball, it's classic because she keeps giving him all this feedback. Oh yeah, that's my Annie M. <laughs> blah blah blah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I thought it was brilliant that you were able to hold it together to explain to her about the homeopathic overdose and about Randy. And the envelopes, or I guess it was Banachek. I think they, I don't know who it was, but I just said it was Randy. I think it was Randy did do a TED talk with homeopathy. Right. I know yes, that. And yeah. That was all. Mixed it with there the was envelopes. a flurry of those a couple of years ago. Uh, Banachek and Jamie Inns Swiss did one in New York about six, seven years ago, which is on YouTube, where there was a series of envelopes of living and dead people. So she yeah, may have got those yeah. two confused. But oh, Randy, look, Robin's doing the dishes. Can you come and do my laundry? Come and do my laundry for me. Obviously, I hate yeah. doing laundry. <laughs> Randy did. Oh, that was hilarious. I'm going to make well, I just the laundry out. And I just was sorting it just before I did the call. I, I love doing laundry. I hate laundry. Well, laundry I like. Obviously, you don't know yourself. <laughs> I've got a folding machine. I've got a clothes folding machine. It's great. <laughs> How does that work? You put the T-shirt on, you go fold, 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 and it's perfectly folded T-shirt. Oh my God! Oh, Kenny hasn't one. said anything. I want to hear Kenny. Is that a? Is that something you could put as a sort of patron, uh, patron reward or something? You'll send one of those to us if you <laughs> from all Patreon. Yeah. yeah, I want yeah. to hear what Kenny said. Come on, Kenny. Oh, yeah. I don't. I don't have much input, uh, honestly. I, I humans I, aren't real. I mean, you don't have any input, Mister. Well, aren't well, real? I mean, I can comment on a few things. I didn't listen to the reading because I got in late. Yeah. Uh, I actually asked if anyone, you know, the psychic mentioned that I was going to be late. Because <laughs> I, really, he did. I really wanted to be there. He didn't know it was live. I was, I was recording a, another podcast at the time, but I, I couldn't do it. But um, when you mentioned something about uh, feedback, and I don't know if anyone else mentioned this, but even being over the phone, um, your breathing can be feedback. Yeah, uh, oh, that's true. Because you can hear, if they're listening intently, they can hear you breathing. And if you stop breathing because you pause, like <gasps> that's an indication <gasps> to them. That's an affirmative. Like, holy shit, you got something right. Or my cat just walked and scratched me. Well, right. at some point, at some point, she wasn't sure you were breathing because she asked you to ask you to breathe. To breathe. breathe. Specifically. Yeah. Can well, you please breathe for me? She's trying to refocus. <laughs> wow. Deep yeah. Breath. Yeah. yeah. I t- and I took my deep breaths. You guys saw me take my deep breaths. I took my yeah, deep breaths. I did what I was told. Uh, and that, Jill, I mean, to me, that, that's an indication that she's relying on that. Well, Jill was saying that she felt that the woman was naive. And that's kind of how I felt. And that's why yeah. I didn't go in the attack. I mean, if this, yeah, right. is, if this is somebody who was up I, on the I stage, I, I would have been all over them, up and down and sideways. You notice she you never asked me how she nice. did. Hmm? You were extremely nice. Yes. And for her, who like just a, got told that she doesn't do her laundry, I thought you were very <laughs> held back. Well, of course well, she's nice. She has to live with Mark. <laughs> oh. Think about Love it. You, Mark. She said at the very beginning. Who hates to be a homebody? Oh, I was like, what? I, um, the, the thing she said at the very beginning that wouldn't be the most accurate, I thought was, she said, I'm generally very kind, but I don't take crap from anybody. And I thought, well, maybe. That's spot on. on. That's called the rainbow rouge in cold reading. It's a rule of everything. Somebody, what was the cat with the witch? The cat name with like a witch. What, what, what in the world was that all about? A cat with a little small witch hat? Um, <laughs> no. That I known is win. throwing spaghetti against the wall and seeing yes. what sticks. Yeah, I do. I agree. Yes. Yeah, that That's was, I, I was really, and I was searching in my head to come up with an answer for her too. I was like... I'm thinking Same of my cat's cat? name, thinking, could they have been named after a witch and I'm not aware of it? Imogen, <laughs> Ariadne, Hamilton. <laughs> None See, of those. You were even fit. trying to find a way to make it fit with all your 
background, you still succumb. Well, I still do. I was still trying. I'm yeah. a human. I want to relate to this very nice person. Oh, look, Pontus. Oh, here we go. Nice kitty. Does go. your kitty have a witch's name? It's called Elvira. Is your probably, cat named after a witch, Pontus? Oh, his name is Elvis. So. Elvis. <laughs> well, That's a witch's yeah. name. No, he, he doesn't leave the building. That's why. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and this, this, the idea. Susan? Okay, when she said basement, and I'm in. Well, she was talking was about on? me. You, I'm oh, in the. Yes, I'm in my basement. basement. Yeah, and I'm in I my basement myself, now. That's the lowest. That's that's like. <laughs> I don't think this Aww. woman is in has been in Oregon long because I'm in California. There is have, no basements. I don't I, have I, basements in California or Nevada. No, no, but, but the east parts of California. Oh, yeah. That's, that's what, what specifically. Oh, yeah, what yeah, yeah east coast. I, I, Leonard I, was probably one of the theory, and he, said, he just said he's in his basement. That's right. It was me. She was channeling me through you. Oh, okay. Well, and then she I got a problem if she can see my basement, Facebook friends. But they, and in that neighborhood over near Griffith Park, there are houses. All the houses have basements. Really? Otherwise, that the houses in like in the San Fernando Valley are all built on slabs. So, it, but yeah, they they exist, but they're only like in certain developments. Well, it is possible. I have a friend that told me that she was raised in a house in Salinas near me and had a basement. But oh. it is, I I don't even know if I've been in five different basements in my entire life. I've probably spent more time in Leonard's basement than any basement I've ever heard of. It's just, we just don't. How is it that Leonard has a basement? He's got a huge, massive house. It sucks. It just makes me sick. <laughs> I could put I my whole basement. house inside of one well, you can, his house. You can wow. see the view. <laughs> yeah, <it's> a, <laughs> I mean, I, I, look at this. I'm in my basement right now. So. Are you really? Yeah, but I'm not in California, though. Well, yeah, it's just not a common thing out here to have a basement. I, I, was, I was surprised she didn't take that basement thing and go the route of the symbolic, uh, like, well, it could be a basement. It could just be like a secret room or a room that the other kids... Yeah, I, thought, I was surprised too right. she didn't go that way. Yeah, yeah. she started there, but, tried, but didn't go. She tried. Uh, what, what is the word that she used? It was a, um, a metaphorical. symbolic basement? or yeah. It could have been a metaphor. Yeah. And I was waiting for her to go that way. I did say that, I didn't yeah. say if I had a basement or not. All I said is, yeah, basements can be, I, I think some basements can be really creepy. Yeah. I think I watched a mystery the other day that had a basement in it. I think. Hey, Susan, but, I'd like to take the opportunity now, since I've got a little group of skeptics and podcasters here, I want to do a quick report for the skeptic zone about this ooh. very thing. Okay, you Robert. guys, put your best smiles on. He's going to record us. Yeah, it's going to be audio only, sir. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind uh, putting yourself on mute, Robin, or or stopping the dishes, just for a I'd appreciate that. I'm on my phone, so I don't know how to do it. <laughs> hey, just stop. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just leave. It's okay. I'll no, just don't leave. Off. No, just no. Bye. Don't leave. She'll be oh, on right. Facebook. She can see us on oh, Facebook. There you go. Quick now, Richard, before the rest of us leave as well. <laughs> Well, folks, I've just uh, had a very interesting experience. I've been sitting here in Sydney, Australia, drinking my coffee. And what? Oh, hello. I'm seeing all sorts of crazy things on my screen. I've got a, a screen full of skeptics via Zoom, headed up by Susan Gerbeck from Guerrilla Skepticism on Wikipedia. We've got Pontus Berkman from the European Skeptics Podcast. There's Celestia Ward. We've got uh, Kenny Biddle, Leonard, and Wendy. And the list goes on. Susan Gerbeck, we just all eavesdropped on a psychic reading that you had over the phone. How do you think it went? I think she was a very naive, nice psychic who said she was a skeptic. And she, I think it was fascinating, but it felt like a normal reading. I didn't feel like this was anything unusual. I think that was the impression uh, people around the world were watching. Pontus, what was, did you, you think about it? I think if it was anything unusual, it was Susan's reactions, because Susan was very careful not to give any feedback and, and confirm and, and lead the, the psychic. And, and that made it you know, obvious that there was nothing happening unless, if, if you don't feed the psychic, hmm. nothing is really happening. Yeah, that, that was my impression too. And you had a lot of people uh, 
with me eavesdropping in on on the thing celestia ward from squaring the strange you were eavesdropping in too weren't you i, I yes and i i was i was drawn to it because it she had so many markers of the standard psychic patter that that wasn't necessarily like i'm going to be a purposeful fraud you could see her fooling herself at every stage she had symbolic misrepresentation where i'm seeing an animal oh well the rabbit might not really symbolize a real rabbit it it could be just something else it you know there, there were so many perfect little typical you know it's not a bad thing that this was a typical reading i mean it would have been great if it was like if we suddenly discovered a real psychic through this phone call mm. but in its typicality it was very revealing and and the rest of the, the people who are watching Leonard and, and Wendy, well, Leonard, what was your impressions? I thought Susan did a spectacular job of not helping the psychic. Uh, she was not rude, not nasty. She wasn't silent, but her reactions were incredibly devoid of meaning. Hmm. The, uh -huh. the psychic would say mm -hmm. something and mm -hmm. Susan would say, mm -hmm. okay, not yes, not right. no, not you got it right, not you got it wrong, but okay. Well, that's interesting, or, or words to that effect. Yes, I, I found, I, I, found I, I thought you did it very well indeed, Susan. I, I thought Susan was very poised and in, she was in control of herself and her own reactions I, if, if it had been me, there's, I have a lot of reasons for secretly, I'm a hardcore skeptic and mm -hmm. I would, I secretly wish I could communicate with somebody who's died. Oh yeah. And, and it's, and I'm afraid even in the, you know, like in the midst of an experiment, I would, I would break up. I would I I wouldn't be able to control my own reactions. I thought Susan was spectacular, but boy, the psychics, the the tricks that that woman was was employing, whether it was just something that she learned or by um, um, experience or yeah. wishing to be a good psychic mm. and learning all the cold reading tricks. She was good at what she was doing too. She was, and, and I think if it was anybody else, uh, she would have probably had a flying reason. Kenny Biddle, can I ask you? You you are yet to to watch the whole thing yourself, but have you had much experiences of, of observing psychic readings along your uh, adventures? Absolutely, absolutely. I've learned a lot. I, I I can credit Mark Edward and and Susan <clears throat> for a lot of the stuff that I've learned over the years because of the psychic stings that I've been involved with, with Susan and Mark. Uh, but I, I regularly attend psychic fairs and sit with right. sometimes dozens of psychics in one day. And I've, I've learned over the years to do exactly what Susan does, curb my emotions. I, I am aware of my facial expressions. I'm aware of my head and make sure I do not nod up and down or side to side. Uh, I engaged the psychic. I usually say okay um, rather than yes or no. Uh, I, I just accept that what they're saying, I, I acknowledge it. That's pretty much it. And I have found that within, if, if I do like a 15 to 20 minute reading, it usually only lasts about five minutes. Because you're not getting no feedback. Yeah, I would, no I'd feedback. You, if I was a psychic, I'd kick you out too. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm not getting anything next person. Usually that's what happens. Half yeah. the time I get my money back. <laughs> they actually give me my money back and tell me to go away. Um, but yeah, yeah, it usually ends within five minutes because I don't give any feedback. And wow. it, it, I, I think, Richard, I think you said it. As long as you don't feed the psychic, you don't yeah. get it. They, they can't yeah. read you. They, 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 they come up to dead ends all over the place. Susan, this was a, a fascinating uh, hour for all of us to observe. Will this be a two hours? Two hours. Two and a okay. half hours now we're at. Oh my gosh, yeah. it's all gonna be on my YouTube channel about Time Presents. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wants to watch the full two and a half hours, you're more than welcome to. Well, look folks, I'll put a link to that in this week's show notes.
And if you've got the time, why don't you eavesdrop like the rest of us did live? You can eavesdrop sort of post the event. And it's a fascinating study in a, well, what we can call with air quotes, a real psychic reading. So everybody who's uh, allowed me to uh, commandeer your uh, Zoom meeting, Susan, thank you very much. And uh, I look forward to uh, the next one. Thank you, Richard. Absolutely. Thanks, Richard. We're clear. We're out. Thanks, guys. That'll be <laughs> so, on the show. Yeah, that was great. Um, I made it twice on a show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The, the very ending, I want to make sure that you guys were okay with what I was trying to go with her is I was trying to get her to self-reflect on her claims yeah. of the paranormal. Very hard. And very hard. Uh, that was where I was really trying to say, hey, have you tested yourself and what would you consider a test? Yeah. And hi, here's another IG or um, how, you know, I felt like she really, the question I was trying to get her to, to answer was, have you. Well, folks, I've just uh, had a very interesting take? experience. I've been sitting here. And what would it take for you to find that you really do not have this ability? And her answer was very illuminating that she would never <laughs> not believe she had, she had this yeah. power. She was, yeah. she was very honest about that. Well, nothing, because yes. I had an experience when I was three, and that'll convince me for the rest of my life. Yeah. It was as illuminating as it was unsurprising. Susan, yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Susan, can I get in for a minute? Sure. Lou Hellman, I am the challenge coordinator for IIG, or CFIIG now. CFIIG, come on now. I'm having yeah, a struggle. Right you got to get it. You got to practice it in the mirror a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah, I got to do that. And it's kind of my fault that this thing went the way it did because um, Paul Fidalgo from CFI sent me the link or the, the message when he should have sent it to Susan. I responded to her asking her to challenge to if she wanted to well, take the challenge. And she thought we were going to set her up and that we were going to set up some challenge that she could possibly, that nobody could possibly pass. And she was totally, totally, totally clueless on how this would work. I think at the end it was illuminating whenever I, out of the, I don't know where it came from, the idea of keys, because she said she could hold somebody's keys and, and tell the interview. I got, a better, I got a better idea. Get, get five couples, two men, no, two, two, five, women, five women who are married, related, whatever, separate them and let them read each, let her read each of them in different rooms and then put them together. That would work. But as I kept telling her, it's up to you. You set right. the protocol. It's agreed to by the, the group that's right. testing you. Exactly right. But and that way she would, she was saying she feels energy when she grabs your hand. So that would be, there it is. That's what she does. So the, if you, if you would like to, invite her to come back, I will try to work with her. Okay, I did tell her to think about it, to really consider it. I would be happy to talk with her about it further and right. we'll see what she does. I have a feeling, you know, I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know leaving it now if we're gonna hear from her again or if that was it, it or. Well, you, uh, you, look, I would almost bet you would never get to a testing stage with her. I, it's, yeah. I've seen this again and again. But, yeah, I mean, they like, tend to, but it was an interesting thought process for her. I hope I put a flea yeah. in her ear you will probably. Oh, look, she's got a pie. Oh, wow, it's last. Oh, oh man, that's oh, wait, so now, cool. wait. Will that pie? Me? Will that pie go through Zoom? <laughs> <It's not> so <laughs> Three point one four, and that's the only pie oh, you can have from. <laughs> He's doing that you because you know that 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 over. She, she did give us some. Trick. Go ahead, Cindy. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say that the envelope story about the pictures in the envelopes reminded me of the Robert Moreland, the um, oh. old IIG, uh -huh. the um, the guy with the cup challenge. Yeah, and th because it was um, Paula and I were the lead investigators right. on that, and there's a, a whole story about it on the CFIIG website. Good. There's also the, the video live from dead from photographs that I wrote up for Skeptical Inquirer that we did over um, Skype, I think it was, with a gentleman in Macedonia. And he was using a pendulum, but we didn't realize that until right at the end, because at the end we could see his hand moving. 
but he got 11 out of 20. I, I think that, um, I think this woman made several testable claims. She said that at the end of the year, we would see a vaccine. Um, Nancy Pelosi is going to be out. Oh, it's, oh, no, what in she two, years, exposed, two years time. Exposed, exposed for whatever Oh, exposed for her lies or something. Yes. Something to do with New Jersey, yeah. And something with New Jersey and Nancy Pelosi. Well, and that was really all part of the go to New Jersey to do shady shit. Really? I mean, everybody. <laughs> Everybody goes to New Jersey. No, to do that. But the, the interesting thing is, she, she didn't really know Nancy Pelosi's name yeah. or what state she was from, but she knew I, it, something was going to come down. She did say that um, Leonard's such a goofball. Look at him. Um, it's me, I'm the goofball. The, uh, oh, Richard, Richard is the goofball. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She did say that she thought the lady who knows everything is what she called Nancy Pelosi. And I was like, I don't have a clue who you're talking about, lady. <laughs> I that was remarkable. <laughs> I was like, that, that yeah. was remarkable. And then she finally yeah, she was that. And she never did understand the homeopathic feel. She still no. was thinking that they were real sugar pearls. Right. Well, most most homeopathic yeah, yeah, she didn't have. Richard? Richard? Oh, I just say most most of the population don't understand the homeopathic. Right. I I like what Celestia said that she Celestia said it right on the nose. She said the woman. This is her field. If she's a psychic, a medium that talks to pets and people in in baby, you know, in the belly and stuff. This is her field, and she knows nothing about her field, about even if she's on the other side. Yeah. It, this is still her world and yeah. she should she should my phrase do her own due diligence to at least know who the proponents are what are the skeptics saying let's yeah, I mean, look at that the listen, listen to mark listen to mark who talks That's, about having watched yeah. them and gone and participated and mark found this part of them for so and many she years. does and she apparently works entirely alone and she's got this following, and who knows what they pay her. But, I have an idea, Susan. <laughs> oh no! So I got she, another finger. You know how she approached you, and she's like, "Well, Susan, you just you. I, I enjoyed the New York Times piece, and I see how you've really come across some frauds, but you've never, never, never given some time to a real psychic. I think. <laughs> I think when you write back, you should be like, well. You've kind of glanced at some YouTube videos with Randy, but you've never given some time to a real skeptic. skeptic. That's a good point. And then list, give her a core curriculum. Say, I want you to take two hours of your life. Just like she I gave you a pause because she just gave, gave me hours, it. Yeah. You give two hours to her. Tell her to go through, give a, there's a couple of YouTube primers, the TED talk that Randy gave. When you sit down, I want you to watch these carefully real psychic yeah. and, and then and then tell me what you think you know and and then after that if she wants to go through the trial one of the strongest things she said she said she felt with people's energy was when she put her hand on somebody and the person was burning hot and oh she had burned her other hand on the stove that day line up 10 people five of them have burn injuries on an arm Put them in sleeves and see if she can tell which of the five. So that, can you so test you? like Linda I Rosa's have. did with the, with the therapeutic touch? Can you even tell if there's a hand there? I have set up a number of separate tests to tend to people to say, if you think you can do this, here's a yeah. simple test, adapt it to yourself. And I never hear back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's normal. That's, that's, that's very normal. Yeah. But then I can get them off the challenge and we can go into the next person who wants $250,000. Well, I, I did call that a win. A quarter I call that dollars. a win. Mm -hmm. What you have done in those cases, Lou, possibly, is convince them that they couldn't do what they claimed. It's possible. And in the absence of evidence, I will take the victory. <laughs> there was there was a gentleman on the uh, International Skeptics Forum, which is the successor to the Randy Foundation Forum, who uh, was an engineer who was convinced he could douse, who uh, we were involved in setting up a rather rigorous protocol for him, which included, because he said he had to, digging holes with a backhoe to be able to put the water in, in buckets, and then covering them with whole sheets of plywood and he said ahead of time that will that is adequate it will either work or it won't 
And if it doesn't, I will admit that I can't do it. And what do you think happened, Richard? <laughs> he probably found fault in the protocol or something else. No, no, he said, he said the protocol was fine, but there's something else wrong. Yes, of course. Yes. So this is well, absolutely expected. Yeah. There was the one where there was there was a gold leaf for a dowser. Oh, I, that went because, on forever. Yes, it oh did. Oh my God, you guys! I was like, cut this guy off already. Jeez. Well, I I had a I had a an applicant who claimed to be able to douse gold. He okay. needed at least. I'm trying to remember what the number was, but it worked out to be. 90 uh, 23 karat gold so normal gold uh jewelry would be work. needed yeah. to have 24 karat gold uh you know a gold bullion or coin or something right and we had spent more than a year going back and forth trying to get a good protocol we got a protocol that he said would work that we were all confident would be uh, unlikely for him to be able to cheat I said, okay, try it on yourself. A week later, I get an email back. You're right. I can't do it. Thanks. Really? That's amazing. That's unusual, yeah. Get an email back. That's, a, that's very unusual. That's why I mentioned it. We had, we had one recently, as soon as the, with all of the publicity came out, of a gentleman said he could do this, that, or the other, but he needed us to give him a castle and the $250,000 first. <laughs> and, I wrote back, and I wrote back and I said, thank you for a very amusing Submission and of course closing. <laughs> one, there was a test and, that uh, Mark did with the IID a long time ago. Is one of my well, I wasn't around at this one because you know I live like seven hours away. But the guy Mark picked a guy up at the airport. Oops, no, and, no, no. And the man wanted to know if Mark had the check. <laughs> and Mark's like, I, I don't have a check for you. And the guy's, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm hoping you guys are gonna give me the, the money right away. And he's like. This is a preliminary. You have to win this before you can go to the next one. We'd have to set it up. It's going to be days before we'd even be able to do that if you pass this one. And and the guy, Mark, like we made that very clear to you. And the guy's like, well, I really need the money because I got to be able to get back home. <laughs> I remember that. Mark's like, he's like, I got to pay for a hotel room while I'm here. I need that money. I think it was a hundred thousand dollars at the time. I need that money. Mark's like. Oh, dude, That's this the next my car. It gets back home. <laughs> I don't know what ended up happening with it, but it was the idea that that even when it's clearly put out to these people, they still don't hear you or or understand. No, people, but they only hear what they want to hear. I think I, it was really an. It's an interesting experiment. Maybe somebody's going to do a PhD on this exact us talking about it right now. Unthinkable uh, <laughs> optimism. Yeah. It was nice, well, you know. And I, I, mean, I don't I see how anyone could watch Randy's homeopathy demonstration and mistake it for a suicide attempt. I if bet there was really nothing they don't, unclear. They don't understand because they don't yeah. understand homeopathy. But there, well, there was watch no, but he this. he clearly explained it, yeah. and yeah. there there was absolutely no possibility that it could be misrepresented on its face. You guys, have to be run. overwhelmed. Bye, Celestia. Bye, Celestia. Take care, Bye, Celestia. Celestia. I'll be over for later. Yeah. Send, an some great email to, send an email to IIG, to CFIIG. Um, I need to be really, really... Oh, there. Richard's got some homeopathy. I have some, too, actually. Somewhere. I think it's, it's just a bottle I kept. But I oh, need yeah. to be really clear before... Oh, there you go, Brower. I have got to be it. really clear medicine. that this is that what she got right and what she got wrong, because I was taking notes. And you were not, uh, I wanted you to tell her that. But or she never would, asked. She did well, not ask. Could, I thought that was email. really interesting. She didn't Who's think it? how to go. You Sorry, I, I've got to go because I'm on a, on a Cosmo Quest panel in a little while and I just have to do some prep. So thank you, everybody. Okay, bye, Richard. Thank you. Thanks thank for hanging out. Sure, it was a fun day. Bye-bye. Uh, okay, yeah, I got to go here real soon, too, because I haven't eaten. And it's now 445. Yeah, I, I had breakfast hours and hours ago. But anyway, I need to get it on video that what she got right, what she got wrong, you know. So... Most of it's just general stuff, you know, obviously eat more eggs. It's good for, you know, calcium levels, whatever. Lots about eggs. Yeah. Lots about eggs. Yeah. Um, I, I'm fine with laundry. I like doing laundry. 
I just took a load out of the laundry and I was going to fold it before we started. I, I like the smell of laundry. I love laundromats. We don't have a laundromat, but I love hanging out at laundromats. I like the fluorescent light, <laughs> the smell, and the people. I love all that. Um, I have a garden. I love planting flowers. I adore, adore, adore plants and gardens, but she couldn't see me. It was a phone thing, so she couldn't see that I had plants for my house and a garden. But that's kind of a general thing. I think most people like flowers. I, I mean, it takes somebody like Jay Diamond who'd say, I hate flowers, because he really doesn't like flowers. Sorry, Jay, just, let, just telling you. The teacup with a cat was a hit. It could have been a hot reading, because I just did a video with a cat cup, with a, and I just mentioned that it was a, a cup of tea that I was having with a cat. So that could have been a hot reading, or as you guys said, it could have been throwing spaghetti at the wall, and I made the connection. Um, the love interest, no, I'm, I'm devoted to Mark Edward. I'm not looking for anybody else, especially somebody who has a boat, who is in the United Arab Emirates, who's got, uh, <laughs> still connected with a, uh, the, and it, she definitely was not talking about Mark because he is taller than I am, which is odd for her to say, considering she guessed I was about five, five, I'm five, four. And that was odd for her to say, he's probably taller than you because most men but that, are taller but than that's me. average five five is a good average guess yeah, yeah yeah it is a good average guess and and she's and the idea that my man that i would be with would be taller than me is pretty generic and she said he was five ten five uh six foot and mark's like five and he's seven. not he's yeah, he's like five seven five eight he's, he's the average size five. yeah he's an average uh, average age so if she was thinking of somebody other than mark that's going to move into my life by the end of the year she's wrong <laughs> Way wrong. He'd be I, lucky, lucky to stay around, right? <laughs> <laughs> and there is no way in this world I'm going to have a grandchild or an announcement of a grandchild by the end of the year. I really doubt I'm getting grandchildren. And to have somebody all of a sudden tell me I'm getting a grandchild by the end of the year, that's ridiculous. Um, the, <laughs> I think I'm near the ocean. That's, that's it. The grandfather things were the weirdest. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, Sterling. Hurry up, Sterling. <laughs> um, you guys all get on them now. And, um, oh, and the grandfather stuff, I was trying to be very careful to say, I'd love to hear from my grandfather. And I, she says, well, you have to say his name and he will come through. So I gave his first middle and last name and I wish she had gotten something, but I, I am the youngest child of a youngest child. My grandfather, Frank, Frank John uh, Gerbic was born in 1864. Abraham Lincoln was alive when my grandfather was born wow. in Slovenia. He came over in 1890s. I've been doing my genealogy, which would make it so much easier to do my genealogy if I could just ask them, you know, talk to my <laughs> grandfather. And I don't want to hear about a dog. I want to hear who, why did he come from Slovenia? What day did he arrive? Because I can't find your immigration. I want to know, did you come with any? I want to know details, okay? I don't want to hear about your dog. I want to know he if he was left-handed. I want to hear if he was left-handed. Left that, yeah, right. he did not have a dog. So for me to have known my grandfather, who died in 1939, who was born in 1864, is ridiculous. And for me to be sharing a, bo a bowl of popcorn with him is <laughs> yeah, utterly ridiculous. I just, George, put, I just put a thing in the chat with my email. Okay. If you want to, uh, if you well, want to. Well, I've got your email. I've got your email. I know you do, but some don't. Oh, okay. There you go. Kenny Biddle doesn't. How do you know? <laughs> email right now. But the idea that, that, and then I asked, I said, let's just, let's just switch this up and go to my grandmother, Myrtle Finley. Tell me anything about her. She died in 1922, which I didn't tell her that. My mom was no, died, actually, I think she died in 1925. But her, but my mom was like two or three years old. She, the woman died of tuberculosis. My mom barely has a memory of this woman. And so for her to, to know that my grand, this grandmother of mine didn't like the man I had children with, which is not a stretch because I, she knows I'm single. So I, and she knows I have, the psychic did, did know I had children. And she, because I said so, and she did know that I was single, or I said I wanted to know about my love life. So obviously, I'm not, not say with you were, the father of those not, children anymore. You did not say you were single. No, I didn't, but I did ask about my love life. Correct. So I wouldn't have asked about my love life husband. if I was still married to my the father of my how children. You, 
You could have and asked. notice she never said anything more specific than the man you had kids with. The fact that you had kids that was implies she that, that there was one. Cash. She so there, was there's, there's nothing, no information in there. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. That, yeah. Very good. You picked up on that. She, so. she, she, she that did a, a really good phrasing. job of letting us fill in the details for what she never actually said. Right. And it's obvious it's if I'm not with the person anymore, I'm probably trip. not happy with them. So for my grandmother to not be happy with the man I made. No, she could from beyond the grave be not happy. Exactly. With so Boy, that's why I asked her again. I said, does she have any memory she'd like to share with me? And I believe I'd have to go back and watch it again. Didn't she have some memories of her and I interacting together? I think when I was a very little girl. Yeah, I think that's right. I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, but she died in 1925 and I was born well, in 1962. You, you were not well, you've yet. aged very well. <laughs> <laughs> a little awkward. I think well, they was, were they were experiences you had as a child with her before your mind was poisoned <clears> and <throat> you stopped believing in spirits. And oh, before no. you were born. I that's so sad. We had a we had a <laughs> we had a challenger uh, or a uh, person come on to the uh, the J ref who. Um, had gone to a John Edward, I think it was John Edward, um, and was a firm believer. And she knew that because her grandfather told her that she had bought a new refrigerator. And that was enough to convince her. Hmm. You can't argue would, with that. that. That goes with Kenny Biddle would say something. Like, I could hear him saying, <laughs> I just paid you a hundred bucks and you're going to tell me I bought a refrigerator? <laughs> give me Can't you give me a little bit back. more? How about like when the warranty is going to expire on it or something? You know, should I get she went back and warranty? forth. She went back and forth to his um, uh, shows over and over and over again. We don't know how much she spent. She was absolutely adamant that he was the real deal, and nothing, in fact, analyzing a recording couldn't convince her. And, and as I said to this woman at the very end, is there anything that you could hear, learn, experience that would tell you that you do not have this ability? And she said no. She said no. I, because I saw my little sister whenever I was three. And her sister is her little sister. So her little sister was one, two. Did she say her sister died? Is yeah. That what I'm well, that's what her website says. She'll I have never a question. Uh -huh. She'll never hear anything. She'll probably never contact you again. I don't know, but I feel like I got a full conversation out of her. You I did. Like, yeah. I would but, like Susan to uh, respond to her and tell her, look, the IIG or CFIG is willing to work with you to design a test for you that you don't have to share with us. And I will do that. She could write what to I me. wanted to know is how her her I would like I didn't think of it until now I would like to so I couldn't have suggested it earlier her definition of of psychic and her definition of skeptic because she self-described oh, yeah she calls herself a skeptic so how does she define the word skeptic if she if that was skepticism <laughs> every technical yeah, there term wasn't a she skeptic used bone in her body Every technical term she used, she abysmally misused. Skeptic, energy. energy. I mean, her, her use of the word energy as oh, yeah. a physicist just makes my skin crawl. <laughs> Even as a non-physicist, it makes my skin crawl. Uh, yeah, but you're, you're, one of these, you're one of these science folks, Lou. And so. I wanted to make sure I got in there that this woman for, will, will read your, your embryo, Yeah. tell you what your embryo is experiencing, and your person in coma, she's yeah. happy to tell the you. The coma thing was creepy. I, I made sure I put that in there. I had it in my Seriously? notes. Seriously, she after. said that? She, yes. she ha it's on her did website. You, did you so um, see I anywhere her. on her website what her fees were? Why wow. I did not. Her what? The her, fees. What she charges. No, I did. I was going to ask her how much would this have cost me. But yeah, I, I, you no know, she, it was free. But, you know, I thought that was odd. But I, I was reading her website. You know, and where she said that it was a coma, she'll, she'll, uh, people who are uh, severely autistic. And I'm like, that's facilitated communication, lady. And, um, you know, that's not okay. 
That's and, bullshit. And That's if she would read that, she would say that the baby, she would read infants and tell them, and the infants would tell her that she doesn't like the name the parents chose for the child. Like this infant child knows a good name from a bad name. <laughs> like, I don't like that name that my parents named me. And she also reads animals, which I thought was interesting. And, and somebody put in the chat and I was going to ask, can she read a pregnant cat? Can readers? she what? A cat. Can she read a pregnant, pregnant cat? Will she read the the... And by the way, when, do cats go to heaven when they die? Apparently they do. Nine oh, times. No. Mm -hmm. Say again. Nine times. They have nine lives. So they go oh, nine, nine times. Nine oh, times. Oh, she did. Yeah. Yeah. Nine she said, I think they only go the ninth time. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. I like how she said, she tried to get me to agree with her in auras. She said, well, you know, like with an aura, and I'm like, an aura? aura? <laughs> I, don't, I don't agree with auras. Le Leonard's got aura coming all out of them. Uh, yeah, it was kind of funny because she's like, well, you know, with auras. I remember Mark did a, a, a podcast with a paranormal show, and they were getting into it, like arguing he was <laughs> on the show. And the guy says, well, let's change the subject we can all agree on. Witches. <laughs> when she started talking about auras, her view of auras matched whatever she had just been talking about earlier, and they were you know, both completely imaginary. Wendy and Leonard, you'll agree with me, Susan, you'll agree with me. Trying to get people to define what it is they can do is almost impossible. I, I don't yeah. think she'd ever really thought about it because all no, the they have, I kept asking with her about were like, she wanted to sit down with somebody and get feedback from them and give them a reading and they would validate. That was her evidence. That was all she had is somebody sat down with me and had a reading and they agreed to some of the things I said. Well, hell, I'd have to agree to some of the things she said. I have a garden. I yeah. like flowers. Yeah. I'd like to go to the Caribbean. Yeah, but with this same guy, well, Jeff, here's what, you, what I it has to be a guy with a book. And I chatted about it on the, like the you know, like on the chat hmm. during the, the phone conversation, which is my experience because of IIG um, was that a whole bunch of these people with claims of, of the paranormal, it's mental illness. They, they are misinterpreting yeah. something that is described probably in 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 psychology you know like in the as psychiatric problems and Wendy. they just they they are the we saw it over and over and over again we've just put a statement on the website that says that people have sometimes people have problems and they think they're broadcasting or hearing voices and they should go it's a chemical imbalance in your brain and you should go get it checked now it may not stop them, but at least we put it out there. Right, you know that always bothered me. It's a good move. We had so many really mentally ill people. I'm but sorry, you know, people. Jim Underdown always said, "We don't know if they have mental illness because of the ability, or they have the ability because of the mental, or you know, who's to say?" I remember when you guys tested the guy with the the cupping marks all over him came in roaring drunk, I mean, dropped down drunk. And oh, drunk. yes. <laughs> and uh, the idea was, you know, guys, I think Mark Edward was there and some others, and they were like, what do we do? And, and they're like, well, you know, maybe to do this ability, you have to be drunk off your ass. Who's, okay. How do we know? I do my best work when I'm <laughs> wasted. So, you know, I can attest to that. <laughs> so apparently, you guys, Christopher, had, apparently, Christopher, he also had to take his shirt off. Only yeah, yeah, he was sweating. I swear he could only give good bucket. talks. I was he like, was give him a bucket. Drunk. Yep. <laughs> well, we used to have a psychiatrist, um, John Kiefer. Yeah, you had a psychiatrist. And John Suarez. Yeah, John Suarez. Suarez. Yeah. We, Both who, of them. Who would um, keep us from getting into hot water? Wendy, I just gave John Kiefer a challenge in which the person says that he had been certified as fully. Um, that's the word I'm looking at. It was fully mentally capable. He has no mental problems. I want that. I want that. <laughs> that would be nice. Good luck. <laughs> we have all the best things. But you guys, I need to go. This has really yeah. been fun. But it Thank is, you, we just Susan. hit three hours. Awesome. Three hours and Thank 15 you. minutes, and I have got to eat. 
Thank yeah. you, Susan. I will do everything for that channel. Hey, you guys, make sure you like my the YouTube channel for about time because I need to hit at least 100 subscribers and I'm at 62. So you got please, mine. Just give me a few I, just so that I can hit 100 so I can get a, a – I, I need to fix something on there. Okay. Thank you, guys. I'm going to end this all. Good to see you. See you later. Bye. 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 That was fun. Bye, Bye everybody. Soon. Thank Leonard, you, Thank you.